remember to add a secret word. Also, don't forget to post on Twitter. Hello, hello, welcome everybody to episode three of our new player experience walkthrough. So today, we are going to be continuing on some career agent missions, and I think we should be able to finish them all up here. And yeah, let's go ahead and hop right on in and see where it takes us, eh? Go ahead and start the character up, get our new daily rewards all hunky-dory. And it should be, you know, pretty chill sesh. Probably go for a few hours, maybe three. Three sounds probably about right. Alright, we get 10,000 extra skill points. It's our third day of playing this character. And log in. 07 Cummy Bear. Welcome, welcome in. How are you doing today? Skill training. Alright, and just like all the other um, videos in this series, I will be trying to dictate every action I do, why I do it, and all that good stuff. And hopefully, somewhere in the video, all of your questions will be answered. Spicy Pews, welcome in. So last we left off, um, it looks like we completed our Explorer, Industrialist, and Enforcer paths. We are now on the, I think we were doing, yeah, the Soldier of Fortune. We're up to 6 out of 10, and I need to put a marker down. Um, oh, I need this. Bring this over here. And down below, everything should be chaptered out to the specific quest. If you ever have any problems with any quest, that's probably going to be your best guide. And to make those, I make myself little markers during the stream. So this is going to be Soldier of Fortune 6. All right, so for you, my friend, there's always something. Welcome back. Now we're going for speed. So this, again, the Soldier of Fortune, um, if you're very new to it, I started this path last stream, episode two. Check it out on the YouTubes. Um, but the Soldier of Fortune is kind of more the PVP focused or oriented area. The career agent path missions kind of talk about more interesting modules like uh, points, scrams, webs, afterburner, things of that sort. The soup master, yeah, for sure. So we can use two types of, yeah, they're talking about afterburners and their micro warp drives. We're about to teach you how to use afterburners. They don't increase your speed drastically. Generally about, it. it's twice as fast generally. Um, so if you consider that drastic. Uh, but they suffer less penalties. They only use a moderate amount of capacitor to run and cannot be disabled by warp scramblers. Definitely good bonuses there. Afterburners are much also easier to fit to your ship. They use less power grid and less CPU and have no fitting penalties. So what he's talking about these penalties is that when you equip a micro warp drive, there's a pretty significant capacitor penalty. Um, so it just means you have less battery to work with, like forever. It doesn't matter if it's on or off. As long as it's online, um, you suffer that penalty. All right, we've got an area riddled with dangerous electromagnetic interference that will uh, damage your ship periodically. we got to fly through the clouds of EM using an afterburner and make it to the other side in one piece. Looks like we are currently in our capsule, so we will need to get into a frigate. That should cover that. I think the last mission we did was the one where we blew up our ship. Um, I think the combat frig is the ship we were working with. They're going to give us a civilian afterburner. I think at this point we have the actual 1MN. 
Oh, we have a microwave drive, which will also work for this occasion. So that'll be peachy keen. We just got to get to the place, and we're gonna we're gonna do what we know is a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and undock. Mm -hmm. And what's curious, so generally over here on the left, it will tell you where you're trying to go. Why do I not have that option? Hmm. Oh, this is our air career program. Don't worry about that. Um, this is going to be an opportunities, I think. So this is this guy. Track? Okay. I wonder why that didn't auto track. So yeah, if that ever doesn't show up, um, you just need to figure out how to track it. And this is an opportunity. You're like career agent missions, um, epic arcs, quests, things like that is all going to be an opportunity. Um, can even make this bigger. Do we want to make it bigger though? Oh. Oh, that's kind of not great UI. They hide these other things. Oh, geez, there's lots of them. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we just keep it like this for now. Uh, we got our daily goals. We got destroy. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Destroy 25 non-capsuleers. That just means NPCs. That should be easy enough to do. Scan five signatures. Scan five signatures. Oh, so we get double dipping if we scan five signatures. We should do that. Um, yeah, I think this is part the part of the video where we start like thinking about doing our daily goals. Uh, because if you're a new player... This is a significant amount of XP for you, or SP. And repair another capsuleer. That one's going to be difficult for us to do. So we're probably just not going to do that. Luckily, you don't have to do all of your career goals, or daily goals. Um, as long as you do two of them, you get an extra bonus. And every one that you do, you get a bonus as well. So if we click into this one, um, we get 500,000 ISK. And 500 Evermarks, we'll talk about Evermarks later. Or I'll just quickly say, you can use Evermarks to get uh, your ship looking a little bit prettier. Um, or more customizable. In the future, there should be better and more options. Right now, it's kind of mid. They introduced it and like I haven't done a whole lot with it. Um, and I thought you got a little bit of ISK or um, SP for doing... Maybe that's just a different reward. So that, that gives us money in Evermarks. This gives us money in Evermarks. Maybe you only get SP now if you do two of them. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing these. Let's go ahead. Can we track this? Yeah, we can track this too. So whatever you want. You can track. Let's scan five signatures. Let's track this. And now we got like a little little list of things that we're interested in in our tracking bar. This opportunities page is fairly new to the game, uh, but it seems pretty cool. If you actually get to use it, um, it should probably be able to direct you to cool things for you to engage in. We have three active, which is the things we are tracking. That's cool. We have some rewards. Okay, so this is our previously com completed uh, daily goals. Looks like we've completed three of them, and then we also completed two on the same day. So we get 10,000 SP, and we get some money. We can go ahead and claim all. And this SP goes... Yeah, goes here. 
in your reward queue. And again, if you are an alpha account, I recommend saving all of these in your reward queue until you need to use them. Um, they also give you a enforcer expert system. I don't know exactly when or where I got this, but you will probably have one as well. And the expert systems is a system that basically it gives you free skills um, for a period of time. It looks like it will give us 44 days of free skills. That's pretty cool. Um, of, of training time worth. So if we were to train all these skills ourselves, it would take 44 days to get the XP and all of these things. Um, but this expert system lasts for... I think four days. Uh, it doesn't tell us. Let's see, if we view it in store, will it tell us there? You can also buy these expert systems. <laughs> um, or at least you should be able to. Should be a service. Okay. We just search for expert. So we, okay, there is no enforcer expert system available on the Nest store, but let's look at the gas harvesting one, because this is one that you might want to actually think about getting. We'll talk about gas harvesting in a little bit. Uh... It doesn't tell us how long it is. Come on, Eve. This is where we go. CC, please. What's up, Necro Gaming? How you doing? Welcome in. We're doing our new player walkthrough. Figuring out questions and answering them. Um, so if we go to our character, where these expert systems live, it's in Pilot Services. And then, oh, was it not in pilot services? Personalization? Oh, that's skins and emblems. Character? Okay, character. Right, because expert systems is per character, not per account. I guess that makes an amount of sense. Um, browse expert systems. Here's this. Seven days. Okay. They last for seven days. It looks like all of them. Cool. These will tell you how many skills you get, what ships you can unlock. Um, a lot of times I wouldn't really recommend using expert systems, um, but there probably is a situation where it will be helpful for you. Who knows? A lot of times during the events that they put on, they will give people expert systems so that they can engage in that event for a week. Um, so that's probably going to be a time that you might want to pop one. Right now we're going to save this Enforcer expert system probably for when we're like starting to do Abyssals or like... We're gonna we're gonna save it for when we need when we need a little bit more PVE buff, but we don't want to save it too long because by then we'll have all the skills and yeah, it's just kind of a balancing act. Speaking of skills, we still have a training queue of thirty days, so that's good. And we're just training up light missiles and then making those missiles go faster, further, quicker, uh, all that. While we are in our redeem queue, though, we can shift click to get all of our ISK interstellar credits. We got this from our air career program, and we can just redeem to home station. ISK always goes directly to your wallet. Same does flex and skins go to their skin area. Um, so 
you can redeem it anywhere, wherever, you'll still get it directly to your wallet. And we can just do the same thing here. And here. And we can actually use these skill books. Um, let's wait to get into a station, even though we're in our home station still. Um, to get... No, let's just... Yeah, let's get these. And it looks like we also have a air explorer system. This is going to be nice. Again, 44 days. It's going to give us a lot of good stuff there. And it will help us when we go exploring. So whenever we have like a go out exploring stream, we'll pop this system, give ourselves a little bit of buff there, and be on our merry way. Oh, and I don't, I don't know if I ever actually said it. The reason you want to save these um, skill points in your redeem queue is as an alpha character, you have a cap of 5 million SP of allocated and unallocated SP. So right now, if we go to our training, we have 1.7 million allocated and we have 1 million unallocated. So we're already up to that, like 2.7 mark. Um, however, if you're at the limit, of 5 million, you can still inject SP, which is going to be this. This injects the SP into your unallocated, so that is a way to get more SP as an alpha account. And we're going to pretty much stay alpha maybe forever on this account. We're going to play it by ear. If we get rich somehow, maybe we'll purchase Omega for it, um, but we'll see. We'll probably just stay alpha. Um, okay. So let's close this. Let's close this. And now that we are doing this, we can warp to site. Warp drive active. What's up, always caffeinated? Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, if you weren't here for the other episodes, we, um, I should just make you watch the other episodes. Otherwise I'm going to just repeat myself so many times on so many things, but this one is very important. This is game changing. Um, if you go to your settings, gameplay settings, the open radial menu with, we use right mouse button and we set it to a pretty low delay here. And so that, that means whenever we want to do something, we're pretty much always holding right click, and then we can just move on this radial wheel. It's very quick, very easy. Uh, and then we can just activate gate. And we do a lot of our stuff that way. Hotkey, this is a two hand game. You need to be using both of your hands to play. Uh, you need to be using hotkeys. Uh, otherwise, it will be slow and tedious. And we don't want to be slow and tedious. Warp drive active. Just want to say thanks for the sleeper cash videos. Oh yeah, great videos. Everyone check them out. Helped you a lot when you got back into Eve. Nice. All right, so we're in the deadly field here. We're gonna go ahead and approach the station. Turn on our micro warp drive, and we're taking a little bit of damage, but micro warp drives generally make you go five times around five times faster. It's a little bit more or complicated and formula based than that, but in general, five times. All right, we can just go ahead and dock back up. Warp drive active. Hopefully we don't bump on this asteroid too much. This is a situation where autopiloting uh, isn't the greatest. We should have just manually piloted, but it gets the job done when things are low stress.
Looks like we've made it past the 10 million isk mark. Noise, noise, noise. All right. So we can go ahead and turn in this mission. Request next. What's he got for us this time? Alongside hybrid guns, we Kaldari use missiles. Um, and honestly, they can primarily use missiles, and some of their stuff uses hybrids. That's how you should really be thinking about it. Best option of all, um, while weapons from other factions damn near lock you into dealing a single type of damage, EM, thermal, kinetic, or explosives, Kaldari missiles can deal any kind, and we can switch them out on the fly. We even have auto-targeting... Don't read this. This is a lie. We even have auto... Don't do that. Uh, unless there's a very specific situation um, where it's like AFK farming, where you would use auto-targeting missiles. Every other situation, don't do it. Just don't even imagine that they exist. Uh, we've cornered a pirate nearby. I'll provide you with a civilian light missile launcher and hope you finish him off with it. All right. So now he's introducing us into secondary weapon systems. He's giving us a missile launcher, which we will go ahead and equip and use. We can rip off this remote shield booster. Definitely don't need that anymore. And let's look for our missile launcher here. And we need to load it with missiles, so we can just move, drag this over here. And it looks like it loaded 40. We have 60 remaining, so we're going to drag the 60 into our combat frig um, cargo hold here. Um, other than that, and while we are chilling in our inventory, remember that we... Hey, bitch! Um, <laughs> you are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so ad pause time. your fucking game. We did get some skill books, I guess just as sort of rewards as well as um, daily or unclaimed items. Um, so we can go ahead and shift click to highlight all these click first click the first one then shift click bottom that will highlight everything in between uh, control click will highlight just one like another thing so if we control click all of these one by one same result and we're going to inject skill what this does is maybe it just saves us a little bit of money it looks like I can't inject them all at the same time even um, just saves us a little bit of money you can do this remote injection for basically every skill so if we don't have it it'll be like um, I'm missing one of the skill books for this I can click this to purchase it it'll cost 1.3 million however if I get the book the book is slightly cheaper it really generally doesn't matter if you're in a major trade hub you can just buy the book there or if you happen to get a book from like the starter stuff um, if it's not convenient just spin the isk and remote inject it it's not too big of a deal there are a very few exceptions i want to say like three maybe four books that you cannot remote inject because an npc does not sell them um they are found exclusively out in the wild um and you'll know them when you find them because it'll be like you can't inject this Oh, actually, there's more than three or four now. All of the Triglavian stuff, I think, cannot be remote injected. I'm going to say all. Yeah, I'm going to say all all the Triglavian stuff. Um, but as an Alpha account, we can't use Triglavian ships. So if you're staying in Alpha, don't even worry about that one. We also got this skin. Um, it sells for 1.3 million estimated. Skins are a little bit hard and weird to sell. We'll probably try and sell this one, honestly, because I don't anticipate we'll be using the Venture a lot, and that 1.3 extra million might come in handy. So we're going to keep it for now. And if we do use the Venture, maybe we'll use it. Even though I like the Venture's base skin. Okay, so we got our missile launcher. Let's go ahead and shoot a guy. Gorlorb. Oh, seven Gorlorb. Welcome in. Orb drive active. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we can group our weapons. I don't know why they were ungrouped. We can move this over to control one. So now one and control one affects our different weapon systems. I'm going to right click this guy. We're going to go ahead and orbit him. We're going to control click him. Then we're going to hit control one. And our missiles will start firing as soon as we lock him. If we hover over, our range is 19 kilometers. So let's go ahead and use a micro warp drive pulse just once. So we can click it on and then click it off. That will get us in range. And the good thing about missiles is that it only takes in effect your target's size and speed. So you can be going as fast as you want and you can be as large. Yeah, you can just be going as fast. You can have your traversal, your angular velocity ripping fast so if they have guns it's going to be very hard for them to hit you but it's still going to be decently easy depending on their size and speed for you to hit them that's kind of the advantage of missiles all right we successfully killed that guy let's go ahead and dock back up and finish the mission Yeah, so missiles and drones um, work that way. Um, missiles and drones work differently, but the gist of it is that those two weapon systems rely on only what your target is and is doing. Whereas all the other turrets, so hybrid turrets, laser turrets, and projectile turrets, um, and disintegrators, which is the Triglavian thing, we'll call them disintegrator turrets, uh, I'll use turret mechanics, which relies on angular velocity, and that relies on both ships, what they're doing. How fast they're going and what their angle like to each other is. But not size. Except for size is still a factor in um, tracking. Um... this mission we've built a little of our understanding of our nation's warfare methods yay keep in mind that if you prefer one system or an over another you can train into it none of the empires restrict access to their weapons technology of course Kaldari weapons work best on Kaldari ships which often give exclusive bonuses to fitting our weapons so if you tend to like other type of weapon systems then chances are you'll want to train or cross train into that race's starships as well you can do this. You should do this. If if you if you want, you choose a race hole and weapon system to kind of train into. We are using missiles because they are the best for new players. I highly recommend that you do the same. You don't have to do the same. You are free to make your own mistakes here. Um, but missiles are really good for Kaldari ships as well as some Amar ships as well as some Mimitar ships. Um. But yeah, we'll be focusing mainly on mm, Kaldari and Galente. Because Galentes use drones, um, which is the other thing that we kind of like. And hybrids if we're PvPing. And yeah. Which Kaldari and Galente use as well. So it, it just kind of, it kind of all, like uh, everything that we want kind of fits into those. Projectiles are the hardest, and Mimitar are the hardest ships as well. Don't recommend them until you are more experienced. Again, you can make your own mistakes. Projectile turrets are fun. That's true. And laser turrets go pew, 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 pew. Laser, they're lasers. They have their benefits. Um, I personally think they're m meh. I don't see a lot of reason to use them over the other ones. But some people like them. And they're, they are still fine. It's not too much of a big difference. If the you secret like lasers, word was lasers. spoken by Spooky <gasps> underscore Diplomat. Spooky! Give them a prize now. Congratulations, Spooky. You have spoken the secret word of the day. You can tell me which one of those obelisks or um, scope skins you want, and I will get it to you. However, I will have to get it to you later because I can't log into my Omega account with the skins while I'm on my Alpha account. Uh, but yeah, the, sp the secret word was blasters. 
You Make said Make sure blasters. you re-enable the secret word. All right, let me re-enable it real quick. There is a whole ass list of secret words. Um, so every this is how we do giveaways here. Every day, when I start stream, I will add one secret word. There are also many other ways to add secret words, such as um, single person channel points, community channel points, um, sub goals, and viewer goals or um, follow goals. Um, what do I want to? I think that's what I want to unenable. Oh, wait. Or disabled reminder. I can never remember what I want to enable and disable. It's one of these two. Alright. Chaos, chaos, chaos! Welcome in, chaos! Spooky wants a venture. Alright. Let me just notate that for you. Is your correct um, IGN also Spooky Diplomat? Better be. All right, back to the good stuff. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, let's request a mission. So he's got just the thing for us. Fleet warfare is common in New Eden, and in any fleet, the fleet commander, FC, is the most important voice to listen to. For our next assignment, you will join one of our local anti-piracy fleets. So fleets are just groups um, of people. Um, and we will be the auxiliary support for a hostage rescue. We will take our orders from a local Concord FC. Concord is just the local, like, it's the uh, police group, generally. Uh, and your job will be explained to you once we arrive at the perimeter of the base. Follow the instructions carefully. The lives of the hostages depend on it. All right. So we just got to go to a place and listen for instructions. Did I hear what's going down in whole space? Um, do you mean like laser hawks and is it whole control or is it, wait, Sin Cindy? Lots of people in in the high holes are really pissed off at each other because of some exploity stuff. Is that correct? Orb drive active. You say yep, yeah. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. All right. Um, is this our FC? So if we go to over to local, he'll probably be talking in local. Oh, okay, it actually gives me a whole box. Welcome to the fray, Egger. Egger is just a, a term they use for like new bros. Like you're you're in your new capsule. You're a little egg. Um, I've ordered the fleet to hold its ground for the time being, but we're going to send you in to recover the hostages shortly. Moving out to the next area where the pirates are. They're expecting a negotiator, but we're sending me instead. You are not to engage unless I give the order. We need to maintain the appearance of peaceful negotiation until the safety of the hostages can be confirmed. Let's go ahead and activate gate. Now that he has told us to warp in. Always listen to your FC. Don't warp 
jump, do anything until they say so. It just makes things work better. Um, and there's lots of really great public fleets we'll go over later <laughs> when we're ready for that. Um, we'll probably be joining some public fleets and having a ball with them. All right, says, good work. In a moment, we're going to request that the pirates relocate the hostages to the prison facility you should see up ahead there so that we can verify their safety. The moment they've done that, I want you to charge towards that. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Let's go. Let's go. Rescue the hostages. Um, I didn't get to read the, the last of his message. So we're going to open this can. And maybe we start blasting. We'll see. Oh, I overshot it a little bit. Because I was using my micro warp drive. Alright. We got it. Alright, we can dock now. Warp drive active. Looks like they played it cool too. Hostage situation resolved. Yeah, a lot of times people join fleets. Um, if you're in a corporation, you'll join a fleet to like do corp activities. Maybe you'll all, all, I dare to say it, mine together. Maybe you'll do the home front missions, which is kind of like new player. Man, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do some home front missions with some people. That's a great idea. Um, maybe you'll go do some PvP yeet fleets. That's where everyone kind of leaves from Jita, the main trade area, and they use a filament to yeet into far out space where they go try and find some pvp uh to blow ships up slash themselves up uh it's real fun there's lots of great communities that do it fun ink shout outs to them all right let's complete this mission all right we followed orders uh, good job there's a lot more being confident fleet pilot of course but it is so often that these simple lessons are lost forgotten the fastest Quest the next mission. Uh, all right. Something just came in. We're returning to interdiction tactics by having you test out a stasis webifier. All right. When activated on a target ship, it encases its containment field and slows it down dramatically. We actually already have one of these from, uh, the I think, the Enforcer path. So we've already learned a little bit about it, but it's time to learn about it again. Uh, we've chased a pirate down. We want to slow him down. All right, cool. So I think it's actually already on our ship as well. Yep, we have Stasis Web Fire 1 even. Cool. Let's go ahead and undock, and we'll get to doing this. Uh, but yeah, so a Stasis Web of Fire is a module. You click it when you're in range, and it will slow the target down by usual, like a little over half. Depends on what module you have specifically, uh, but it's like 50% to... I think 65 is the max. Um, and then you can overheat it, but don't worry about that until we talk about overheating. But yeah, or you can get bonuses to its range and strength, and but don't worry about that. Those are on different ships. This guy's saying, get out of here, Egger. We're gonna go ahead and approach him. We're going to target him, and we're going to Click on our stasis web of fire. It says we got to be closer to him. So we're just going to wait till we're closer to him. <laughs> All right. He's standing down. He'll cooperate. Just let him live. All right. Cool. Now we can just leave him. <laughs> we scared him half to death. So now he's good to go. Base module Civ at 50%, T1 is 55. I think the range is the best feature of the more powerful. Um, now, I know you can get factions that are 60. I was thinking maybe, I guess, let's, let's, let's check. If we right-click this, show info, we can show variations. Uh, there's a variations tab. We can compare all of these different variations. 
can go to our more tab make sure that only show attributes that differ is on this is a very useful accepted. thing to click and then we're going to um, look at maximum velocity bonus check this and sort this column 60 okay so 60 is the most you can get a fed navy for 60 um, and it costs 64 million isk. Whereas the T2, which is kind of like the, the standard baseline, um, generally you want to be shooting to use T2 stuff. Sometimes you'll use faction stuff if you need it or if you're just feeling blingy. If you want to be expensive, once you get faction modules money, um, which we will, we will. But yeah, so this one is 60% at 10 kilometers, and then the one that this Fed Navy one is real cool, because it goes 60%, same as the T2, but it has 14 kilometers. That's all. That's like a 40% bonus in range. But yeah, cool stuff there. And when fitting your ship, you just kind of try and choose. It's all a cost to effectiveness ratio. How much are you willing to spend for what kind of bonuses are you getting? And it's all definitely um, diminishing returns. You can get like 80%, 90% of good effectiveness for like 20% of the cost. You know, that old 80-20 rule. Um, Alright. So next... We've almost completed their training. Once we're done, we plan to recommend you to our nation's capsuleer militia, the State Protectorate. What you have learned from us will quickly be will be quickly overshadowed by what you can learn while fighting in service to the state. You'd be excused for thinking that money would be a more suitable reward, but reputation can matter just as much in New Eden, and so does finding people you can trust who you consider a family. To belong to the Protectorate, though, you must prove yourself as a combat pilot. That is what lies ahead, Ethel Strong. Get a combat ship fitted out and get yourself ready for a fight. Alright, the exam. Number 10. So we're going to have to probably blow someone up. We're going to be stepping back on this one and letting you take control of the situation. One of our patrols spotted a small group of suspicious vessels heading towards a local pleasure hub. After processing their ship IDs tags, we've determined that one of the pilots is a known terrorist responsible for dozens of station bombings. A Concord raid into the premises would be picked up by the terrorist well before the ships actually arrived. We need this murder taken out while we have his location, so you must move in yourself and then assassinate him. Do you understand? So as a capsuleer, oh, and we're going to get a whole-ass destroyer as a reward. That'll be nice. Uh, as a capsuleer, we are like the tippy top of skilled person in any ship that we fly. So we're flying a frigate. So like frigates can be flown by whole like crews of people. But if you put a capsuleer in there, they can take care of, I'm going to go ahead and say it. They can take care of 80% of the work with 20% of the effort. Um, and then the rest of the, the ships can, the rest of the crew can work the rest of the ship. But that's kind of the, the lore of this stuff. Not just a whole ass destroyer. My favorite T1 destroyer, says Spooky. Korm is a pretty good ship. I like how it looks. So uh, I think we will probably use it. Um, we'll either use it or the Senesis for the SOE epic arc. We're going we're gonna to look into two different fits and actually the quorum is, is the quorum all hybrids i think it is Ugh. i think we'll probably not use it then <laughs> scanners are picking up three hostiles moving into their ships now it looks like they've noticed you good luck all right we're gonna just orbit this guy we're gonna do a pulse of our mark warp drive to get in range quick enough Uh, looks like we're going to do two pulses, actually. We're going to web him. We don't need to scram him, because um, he's not going to run away, because this is an NPC. Um, standard NPCs like this will never run away, like warp away, so you don't ever need to use your um, points on them. 
taking some damage here, so let's go ahead and uh, activate our small shield booster. I forget exactly how stable in this ship we are. But looks like we are going up in terms of life. And we've killed one now, so they have less DPS. Good for us. Just move on to this next guy, start orbiting him. Uh, looks like we are not stable. <laughs> so let's turn off our shield booster. Again, when you are not stable like so, um, you want to try and keep around 30%. You have your best recharge when you're at about 30% capacitor, as well as shields. Um, so in sticky situations, when you really need to manage things, try and not go below 30%. So we're letting our shields take some of the damage here while our capacitor recharges. While we shoot the terrorist leader. We're going to wait till we're about 30% shields before we um, start buffing them up again. Alright, we're down to 29. Let's go ahead and do a few cycles of this. Get ready to start moving on to this other guy. Right click, orbit him. We're going to turn off our shield booster. And a web, start shooting at this guy. As you can also see, that our missiles have a very long cycle time. Um, so we have to wait until it finishes its cycle before we can turn them on again on the next target. But looks like we're doing all peachy now. And we'll clear this with not a lot of difficulty. Probably would have been better for us to bring an afterburner here so we get a sig tank, signature tank. It's when you're small and fast. It's good for when you're fighting uh, a number of opponents. And boom, down he goes. We can go ahead and dock up as we have completed the exam. The Soldier of Fortune Career Agent Mission Path. Good job, us. We're going to hit Control R to reload our weapon systems. And our shields are going to be automatically repaired when we dock up. Uh, this is not true for your armor and structure. Just your shields, because they naturally recharge. Uh, whereas your armor and structure do not. You have to go to the repair facility and stations. Or use repair modules to repair those things. All right. I really like your style. Come talk to me when you've completed. All right, we've completed. Excellent work, Ethel Strong. You've proven how you know how to hand yourself in deadly situations. We can always use good pilots like yourself. You should consider enlisting in factional warfare. It's definitely an option for us in the future, where you can fight alongside other pilots pledged to the state. If instead you would rather broaden your skills, you can start a conversation with any of my fellow career agents right here in the station. Whatever you choose to do is next. I thank you for the help you've given us. Fly safe, Captain. You too. Alright, we got some reputation for Kaldare State. Um, for completing his thingy. And now we're moving on in to Industrialist. Where we will be making mountains of molehills. He's got something for us. The war never stops, and we need to stroke it with raw materials. Stoke it with raw materials. I want you to go mine some Veldspar ore for me. Remember to fit a mining module to your ship before you go, and keep in mind that you might have to make more than one trip before you report back to me. To make it clear, I want you to mine at least some ore from the location I've uploaded for you. All right, we got to get at least ten thousand Veldspar from the place that we're going. Sounds good. And we are granted a Miner 1 module, which will help us mine. We did already do some mining in the previous, I believe, Industrialist Path. So we do actually already have a Venture, which should make this fairly easy. If we do Alt-F, that brings up Fitting Window. You can also go here on the left-hand side. This little icon is your Fitting Window icon. Looks like we got a venture fitted out, and it's got a miner and a civilian rattling gun. Let's see if we have anything uh, better. All right, we got a 75. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take this off. 
we'll put on a non-civilian module. We do need ammo for it, though. So let's actually, let's just buy some ammo. Um, if we go to show info here, we can say used with, and we can choose any of these. I think our other ship was using antimatter. So if we right click it, we can go view market details. We can see if there's any antimatter for sale in this um, station. The lowest price is here. This is the jumps away it is. This is the location. Um, so the lowest we could get it possibly is $27.70. Um, and we can buy it here for $32.84. That's a little bit of a price increase. Um, but let's say, let's just buy like 100. Uh, let's buy let's buy 300. It's only 10,000 isk. That's a very low amount. So just so that we have a little something to defend ourselves. We go ahead and find it in our inventory, click and hold it, and move it into our Ventures Bay. Again, the Venture... Oh, the Venture does have drones. Um, and I don't think they're ever going to teach us about drones as a Kaldari. Yeah, okay. So we've already done a little bit of mining with this, so we have a little bit of Edspar in our mining hold. But, all right, let's talk about drones. Let's buy some drones. If we can fit them, uh, which we should be able to. So if we go to our skills, we go drones. We have one um, point in drones. It's actually... We're going to move this to the top of our IQ. This skill dictates how many drones you can have out at a time. Um, and we want, we want two. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch actually, an ad right now. So pause three. your fucking game. Um, so we're gonna do we're gonna start training those up All right, and now drones if we go into our fitting window we can see we have a bandwidth We have zero out of ten drone bandwidth. What is that? I'm so glad you asked each drone Has a size and a bandwidth these are generally the same but they don't always have to be in few specific situations so light drones are going to be 5M3 and take up 5 um, bandwidth. Medium drones are going to be 10 and 10, and heavy drones are going to be 25 and 25. Um, so if we go here, we can see our drone bay is 0 out of 10, and our bandwidth is 0 out of 10. So this, to me, indicates that we can have two light drones in this ship. Cool. Great. Let's go to our market, our browser, our regional market which is this icon, this little stock icon up here. You can also use Alt-R. Honestly, most of the time I just hit the icon for this one. I don't know why. I like I like hotkeys, but the icon seems good. All right, so here we are now going to be searching for something. Let's search for drones, um, and we want combat drones. There's lots of different types of drones. In this, we just want a little bit of extra damage, so we're going to go with combat drones. As we said before, we want light scout drones. And we can choose any of these drones. So the drones, all of the combat ones, come in four distinct flavors. That is um, analogous with the races. So there's Kaldari drones, Mimitar drones, Amar drones, and Galente drones. And they're going to be doing EM. They're like primary damage type. So Amar uses EM. Galente uses Thermal. Um, Kaldari uses Kinetic, and um, Mimitar uses Explosive. This is useful to choose if you are in a particular area of space where you're fighting a particular kind of enemy who is naturally weaker to a certain type of damage type. So because, I'm sorry if this is getting too into the weeds here, but at some point we gotta, because we are currently in Kaldari space, we're going to be fighting a lot of Garista's ships, which is the like pirate, the Kaldari pirate guys. Um, and the Garista's ships have... Oh, geez, I better get this right. They do kinetic damage. Wait, no, they do... I think they... Yeah, they do kinetic damage. And they take... What do they take most? Most. 
EM. Yeah. I'm going to say that they take EM the most because their shield ships... Yeah. Um, once you're fighting things, you can always show info on it, and that will give you exactly what its resistance profile is and what damage type it's doing. So once we get into that a little bit more, um, we'll look into that. And maybe the next few ships that we see, we'll, we'll look at what the resistance profile is. But we're going to view the details on the Amar drones because they do EM. At lowest, we can get them at 4,500. Uh, but in this station specifically, we can get them at 6,000 a pop. That's quite a markup. But again, we're only buying two. And 11,000 ISK isn't that much. Consider we already have 11 million ISK. This is literally 0.1%. Um, or is it 1%? It's one of those two, I think. No, it's 0.1, yeah. Um, yeah. So not a huge amount of our total ISK. We just drag this over into our ship. It is now fitted in our drone bay, and we'll be able to use them. Give ourselves a little bit of extra DPS in the instance that we need it. Um, and because we actually have that, I kind of want to get rid of the Gatling railgun. And we'll keep it for now. Honestly, <laughs> we're probably going to like immediately get out of the venture. But we'll see. And let's warp to the site. Drive. Spooky says, I've never heard the 30% thing. Elaborate. Um, what do you mean 30%? When did I say 30%? I would love to elaborate. Oh, are you talking about capacitor and shield recharge? Yeah. If that's what you're talking about, I will elaborate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... This is one of those Eve things where things are like very obfuscated and if you don't know, you'll never know. For instance, Spooky Diplomat is a, we'll call him a half-decent Eve player. Um, and he did not know this one simple trick. So if we go to Eve Online, um, Shield Recharge. There's a very helpful place called Eve Wiki. If you have any questions, Eve Wiki is a great resource for you. Um, so if you go to the passive shield tanking thing, we can go down to... Where does it talk about it? Um, uh, maybe if we go to the shields page. Yeah, okay, here we go. Shield tanking. There's a big long wiki about it. Passive shield tanking. The quick and dirty about it. Shield recharge rate. rate. All ships have shields. And all shields have a recharge rate. It is dictated by a few various things. Basically like how big your buffer is and whatnot. Um, but the long skinny of it is that there is this formula. And it is the same for your capacitor recharge rate. They are the same formula. Based on like your shield recharge rate rate and your total shield buffer also known as your capacitor recharge rate and your total capacitor gives you this graph of when your percentage of average recharge rate so you're at a hundred percent of your recharge rate at 25 percent which is why i say 30 percent because if you go over it then like it's hard to recover but if you are over it then it's like you can use a little bit of it extra um so yeah, this, this is what it is. This graph. This this is, I'm unveiling it all. At 100%, you don't have any recharge rate. And as you go down a little bit, you have a little bit of recharge rate. And at 25%, 30%, you have your max recharge rate of your like passive recharge rate. Same thing is for capacitor. So that's why when you're in those sticky situations, you want to use your natural bonuses of your ship at that 30% mark um, to get get the most bang for your buck. All right. 
So now we are mining. We can go to our mining tab. Highlights it for us. How lovely. There's some asteroids here, a Veldspar. We can control click it. Uh, it wants us to orbit it for some reason, so sure, we'll orbit it. Then we're going to activate our mining module to uh, start mining this bad boy. Says, great work, Captain. Mining is a great way to earn more ISK. No, it's not. Don't listen to her. As you improve, you can train new skills and unlock new ships and modules to improve your mining efficiency. So, as a single account, I highly, highly, highly discourage mining ever. Uh, at, uh, at least slash especially rock mining. So mining is actually a in-game career path that takes a lot of different accounts playing at the same time to be anywhere decently worth your time. All that said, if you just want to enjoy the game, if you think mining is relaxing, if it's fun, if you do it with people and enjoy the social aspect of it, go nuts. Enjoy. Don't let me stop you. Um, but if you are looking to get a lot of isk in a quick amount of time and don't find mining particularly fun, don't do it. It's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> they, they try and trap new bros into playing mining, and it's bad. Um, yeah, there is one sort of minor exception, and it's called gas huffing. Gas huffing can actually be quite profitable for a new character because you can do it in this little venture, which is very, very easy for everyone to access. And depending on the gas, if you go to the right places and know the right areas and how to do it, which you can learn, um, it can be very profitable and enjoyable. So even as one character. All right. So we've mined a thousand Veldspar, we can go ahead and dock up. Orb drive active. And now that we have our drones, we have this drone window. Um, and we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to put this... Where do we want to put our drone window? Maybe we'll put it here. Yeah, why not? Docking permission requested. Docking or, request even better accepted. yet, we'll put it, we'll put it right here. All right, let's complete our mission. Oh, another task. Let's move on to the next stage of the process. First, we need at least 100 units of Veldspar, and then we can reprocess it here using the reprocessing plant and give me the results. All right, let's go ahead and accept. Um, we already have a lot of trit, so we don't actually need to reprocess our Veldspar, but just in case you weren't here or Wait, what the heck? Oh, I guess I gave him all my trit? Where did my trit go? Or my Veldspar? Oh, you know what? <laughs> um, did I warp away from the field before I completed a single cycle? Hmm. Normally you would have Veldspar. You can move your Veldspar into your item hanger. And then you can right click it and reprocess it. If you have enough, you can reprocess into Tritanium. We already have Tritanium from our previous exploits, so we're just going to give him 100 of it and be on our merry way. If you don't have any Veldspar, I would just go back to the field where it was at and mine again. And remember that you, whenever you're leaving, your mining area, you need to click your mining module to let it instantly decycle, and you will get the amount of rocks that you would have gotten that percentage way through the cycle. Almost no other module works like this. I don't know why mining does this specifically. Um, and even, however, if you warp away from the field and you are like still close enough that your module is still online while you go into warp, you will just lose it all. CC please. Okay. All 
All right, next stage of the industrial process is building something. I want you to give me a civilian afterburner. I don't care how you do it. You can build one using the blueprint I gave you or buy it off someone else. But however you get your hands on one, please make sure it's packaged before you give it to me. So whenever you use an item, it unpackages it. You can easily repackage it by making sure it's fully repaired and right clicking and repackaging it. It just helps, it makes it stack easier and it's a thing. It's an old game, and I think this is kind of one of those things that just stuck around for a long time. Okay. So we do already have the civilian afterburner, but just for um, knowledge sake, we will also be creating one. If you double-click your blueprint, that will bring up your industry window. You can also hit Alt-S. You can also go to the industry thingy um, right here. And here we can see that we are building a civilian afterburner. It takes 64 titanium to make one of them. We can hover over these things to see like total estimated price afterwards, total estimated price going in. Um, this is a facility that's being made at. You can choose different facilities, different areas. If you have different um, input locations and output locations, if you're like making bigger things or you have like a whole folder file system, that's useful for that. You can see how long the job is based on various factors. You can see how much the job cost based on various factors. It's a whole thing. Industry is a whole big part of the game. You can be an industrialist. You can uh, min-max all these values. I think it's pretty fun. I like an industry. And you can make a lot of money doing industry as well. Um, Semi-passively. So because things take an amount of time to complete, once you set it up, you wait that amount of time in real life, and then you get your thing on the other end. So that time using your slots is valuable, and so you get money by utilizing them. And if you utilize them well, you get lots of money. Uh, okay, so we're going to build one of these. We go ahead and hit Start. And then we can go to our Jobs tab here. We can see that that's going to take four minutes. Uh, however, I don't got four minutes. We're going to go ahead and just turn in one that we already have and complete the mission. All right, on to number four. Any industrial mogul worth their salt knows how to fight for their bounty. I'm sending you to mine in an area infested with rogue drones. Let's see if you can survive the trip and bring me back the processed goods. All right, so we need 7,000 tritanium. And we need to destroy the rogue drones and mine the Veldspar for our agent. You need to reprocess the ore into minerals when you return to the station. And they're giving us a mining laser upgrade. Awesome. All right. So this is that situation where we already have a mining laser upgrade. Oh, it was civilian, though. So we're going to drag this out. Put in our real one. Um, we're not going to need our data analyzer. Let's instead put a webifier on. Give ourselves a little bit of combat capacity or capability. Most of the time, um, mining ships don't really need that much combat. I guess sometimes there are NPCs and stuff that come up. So, yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, oh, we are missing a skill. So in our fitting window, if you ever see this book up here, this orange book, it means something's gone terribly wrong. You're missing some sort of skill. So we can't actually use our drones because um, we need light drone operation. So if we just click buy and train, you see that this costs 97,000 ISK to inject. That's fine. I guess we can check on market real quick. Um, okay, cool. We can buy it for slightly cheaper in the current station. Probably from an NPC. If we just right click this, view market details, station, you see that it has a very long expiration date, longer than 80 days or 90 days. Um, that means that it's an NPC. Cool. So that's going to be the cheapest that you ever get it at. So yeah, let's just buy that. Scroll down and we can inject. We can also inject our destroyer skill that we learned. And now we can go to our, just because it's injected doesn't mean it's put into your training queue. We can search up light drone operation. We can also go to the drones tab here and we can look for light drone operation. It is alphabetical. And let's put this here. 
So in 17 minutes, we can use light drone operation. However, I want to use it now. This is going to make us do more damage with our drones. So this is a pretty good skill to have. Um, we're just rearranging our skills a little bit. Just to try and get the biggest bang for our buck. So like it's going to take 2 hours to get a 3% bonus of damage. Whereas it's going to take 18 days to get 5% bonus and be able to use the T2. So probably this is going to be a little bit better. But getting to the T2 is, is decently important. So we don't want to wait forever on that. So we can still get like training things up to like level 3 is a really good bang for your buck. Level 4 is pretty good. Level 5 is like only if need be. Um, and for T5, T2 stuff we do need be. So if it unlocks something specific, then like, yeah, you'll probably have to get the T or the level five. But getting a lot of skills to level three or four is very useful. All right, and you just, if you just heard that little ding, that's the ding of industry being done. So if we hit Alt S to bring up our industry, our jobs tab, we can now deliver this. We're just delivering it. Hooray, we've made a thing. Um, oh, right. I wanted to go ahead and I want this now. Be careful what you want now and what you need now. I need this now. Probably I don't, but only apply skill points to things that you need. I guarantee you there will come a time where you really wish you had a lot of unallocated skill points. It's very good to keep this juicy and not use it all immediately on something. So, supply skill point. Oh, gotta pause our queue, and then we can apply skill point. It's gonna take 218. That's nothing. Skill training complete. And then we can resume our training. Make sure you click resume training. Otherwise, you won't be training anything, wasting valuable seconds. All right, so now we can one use one light drone. Awesome, that'll be just fine. Orb drive active. Let's reorder our things a little bit here. Uh, let's make sure that we reload our charges. Yeah, this will be good. This is just how I like my layout. Feel free to figure out your own system. I like my like combatty stuff up here. Usually guns, propulsion, scramming, pointing, um, some sort of e-war, like generally web. Uh, down here I have my utility stuff, my painters, capacitors, um, remote transfers, anything like that's kind of weird. And then down here in the bottom, I have my repairing stuff. All right, let's approach this. Uh, looks like we can get any of these, so we're just gonna approach this asteroid. Let's actually orbit it at 1,000. We're going to wait for these little drones to come for us. We're gonna use our afterburner. Wait till we're in range of the Veldspar and start mining. Do we... So our, our thing says that we like need to kill them. Why are they not coming towards us? Oh, maybe they are now. Alright. So let's unleash our drones. So we've targeted these little guys. We're going to go to our drone panel. And we're going to just click and hold and throw these out into space. And when we do this, it says that we only have skills to do one. That's fine. One drone in space comes out. And now you can see this little guy. This little, this little drone boy. He's ours. He's flying around. And we can direct him to attack by clicking on the enemy and pressing F or fuck him up. And then it says that the drones are engaging this guy. 
Vroom, vroom, vroom. So now it's like a little tiny ship shooting the other little tiny ship. Alright. I mean, move our camera back to our mining. So now we just gotta mine the 3500 Veldspar. In order to return your drone to your bay, you can do Alt R. Oh, wait, Control R. Nope, Shift R. Sorry, I'm bad at this. <laughs> uh, Shift R. You can also change a lot of things in your drone interface. Um, if you want them to be icons or list, I generally like list because it's a little bit more compact and easy. Uh, you can also make groups. You can enable compact mode. That's probably going to be better too. Uh, just utilizes the space a little bit better. Um, a lot of things look better in compact, some doesn't. It's up to you to decide if you want compact stuff or if you want non-compact stuff. There's a bunch of UI updates that they did and a bunch of people complained and for good reason. Um, but yeah, so now we have options. Uh, one last thing about drones is that you can group them. Grouping them is very helpful when you have different kinds of drones. So we're going to go ahead and make a... We're going to click both of them and then right click. And then we're going to move drone to a new group. We're going to name this group. Um, we could call them... What is going to be the most useful? Probably light EM. It means that you have like nine groups immediately, or 12 groups, because you have light of the four empires, medium of the four empires, heavy of the four empires, and then a bunch of your other stuff. Um, but then you can also have a combat group if you have a mix of them. Um, yeah, we're going to do, we're just going to do combat. Combat one. Okay. So now they're in this window. You can make it bigger and smaller. Just useful. Especially when you start getting a lot of drones and a lot of different drones. Almost got our Veldspar. Excellent. Don't worry, we need to scan five signatures and destroy 25 non-capsuleers. We need to really work on killing stuff. Alright. Now we can go ahead and dock. Make sure we turn off our Hold module active. to get that final remaining bit of Veldspar. And make sure you always have your drones with your in your ship when you warp away. If you don't, you will leave them where they are on grid, and you have to go recover them. Wish you could do so by right-clicking. There will be an option that says reconnect to lost drones. Right-click your capacitor, that is. All right, now we got to extract the tritanium. So move our Veldspar to the item hanger. Uh, right click stack all, right click the Veldspar, reprocess, and let's reprocess. Perfecto. Now we can start conversation and complete the mission. Oh, he already has another mission for me, hooray. Gorlorb, welcome in. Don't be you. Don't miss the reconnect to lost drones options and spend a couple years constantly scrooping drones to the cargo hold. Yeah, don't be like Gorlorb. There is a button to make it easier. All right, we've mined, we've processed, we've built, and we've fought. Now let's see if we can transport goods safely. Take these electronic parts out to Malkin 1, Nat Natura Fentonian, as fast as possible. In seven parsecs, no less. All right, so we're just moving 
some goods to this other good place. We're going to right click this drop off, set destination, accept this. And we're going to find our electronic parts. Looks like they are 40 M3. Um, and move this up to our venture, which does have a total of 50. So we can, in fact, bring these crates. So we're not even going to worry about changing ships. Because that would just be a waste of time. Go ahead and undock and start jumping. Looks like it's going to be three jumps away. All right, we're going to move from our mining tab to our general tab. Then our destination is going to be highlighted in yellow. It says that it's on our autopilot route. We're going to right click it and go to jump. Orb drive active. Vroom, 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 vroom. Let's see. We go to our skills. We go to our skill plan. We want to have this general must have. We need to buy skill books. Six million. Okay. So this is now definitely in our wheelhouse of okay. being able to buy. But what we're going to do to save a little bit of iskies is we're going to wait till we get to Jita, the main trade hub, where we're going to eventually be hey bitch, mainly you are forcing basing your viewers out of... to watch an ad right now. So pause your fucking game. Um, yeah, that's so we're going to be mainly basing out of Jita. And once we get to Jita, we'll actually buy all those books. And then we will inject all of those skills with our big bank of 1 million free extra skill points. If you guys don't have 1 million free extra skill points, it means you haven't used a recruit link, which means you should go down to the description below. There's a link. It's called, like, recruit link. Uh, click it. Even if you already have an account, you can use this link. It will get you 1 million free extra skill points. I will get a minor Earth kickback drive. as Active. well. Help everyone out. And yeah, it's really worthwhile. It saves about a month of um, alpha training time. And I recommend you use it on my skill plan. Um, which you can find if you ask me. <laughs> I need I need to find like a local place to put it. Oh wait, you can go to uh, um the in game channel called nth plus one. So if you go to your chat channels, you go open chat window, you type in nth plus one in channel name and click join. I believe I have the skill plan there. I'm not gonna do it on this character because I never want to interact with anything about my other characters or anything for various nefarious spy details. How much souls do you already got? What do you mean, souls? You think I'm collecting souls? Recruit a soul? Um, I think like, probably like 60. Probably about 60. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Looks like this place is on a... They settled on an asteroid. Start a conversation. Complete a mission. Alright. So now we gotta go back to him so we can acquire 25 cat boosters. Let's go ahead and right click this, set destination. Or the drop off location isn't necessarily gonna be where he's at. In this case, it is. If you want where he's at, it's over here on the bottom left hand corner. So right click it, and if it wasn't already my destination, we'd be able to set it there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and undock and head on right back. Orb drive active. Um, well, we got a few jumps. Let's uh, check out the air career program. We have acquired a lot of things to claim. 
looks like all money except for this reward bundle. What's in the reward bundle? Let's claim it. And I guess it doesn't tell us what it is until we go... Oh, okay. Ah, this is where we're getting our expert systems. They give us some money and the Soldier of Fortune. Probably when you complete your Air Courage mission, it gives you this little bonus. This gives you a bunch of skills, 47 worth, 47 days worth. Um, cool. Um, uh, let's close this while we jump. All right, don't do this. Okay. If you ever have okay. anything you care about, even your time, we're gonna go ahead and hit Control S for autopilot. It's also down here. It means it's gonna warp us 10 kilometers away from the next gate we need to go to, and then slow boat to the gate, then jump, and then continue on that way till we make our destination. People will gank you just for autopiloting, so don't do it. Unless you really don't care about dying. Autopilot jumping. Um, all right, let's go ahead and claim all of our money. And then we can go here, and we're gonna just shift click, Walking redeem the home station. Warp drive active. Money, 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 money. Almost a million extra iskies, just for doing air career stuff. Uh, if we go back to activities. This is our enforcer path. What's in the market? If we spend 250,000 isk on the market, we can get some more stuff. We get some some money and some career points. And when you get career points, you fill up this track here at the bottom, which will get you SP all along the way. And then at the very end, you get um, Approaching a lot sorry. of SP and a some cool skins. So. If you don't know what you're doing, or if you don't know what you want to like have a goal towards, the Air Career Program is a great way to choose some little easy goals for yourself. And EVE is all about like finding a goal and then doing it, right? It's a sandbox game. You have to make your own fun. You have to find what is fun for you. There are a lot of different activities that you can engage in, so explore. Is one of the activities, <laughs> but also explore the activities. Um, Warping to station. Warp yeah, explore active. all of them. Nicro says, "I've watched your exploration videos and kept playing. Made video of your own 1.5 hour ass review of the game. <laughs> oh, geez, uh, and not great, and not granted 525 referrals. It's insane. Yeah." Chris just started doing Tier 0 Abyss. Nice, Docking nice. It's a great place to start. The Abyss is a really good place to learn about Docking how to fly your accepted. ship and how to like notice what other ships are and what they're doing. It's a great learning also place to make you a, a hardened PvPer, but also just a better PvEer. All right, and double click him. And we're going to accept this mission. Uh, doo -doo -doo. He wants us to acquire 25 cap boosters any way possible. And he gave us a blueprint to do it. We double click this. How many does he need? He needs 20 of them. Okay. So we need some pyrite and some mexilin to make 20 of these. Oh, okay. Each run makes 10. Um, so each run. Some runs make different amounts. This looks like each run makes 10. We want 20. We need two runs. If we look at the estimated price, that's 3,500. It's going to take eight minutes to do so. Uh, alternatively, we could buy 20 of these, save eight minutes, and it looks like... They're selling for 200 a pop. So if we just do 20, that's going to be 4,000 isk. 4,000 isk is worth nothing. Our time is more valuable. So we're going to go ahead and just buy those. Because if we, if we started building these, like what would we do for 8 minutes? 
technically we could go out and like do something and make money that way while our industry completes, but it's going to just be better for us right now to just buy those. All right. And now we are transporting 20 cap boosters to a drop off location. Did he... Oh, we need to get 20 more? You joking me, mate? Alright, now that I have those cap boosters, we've got a buyer lined up. Remember this, your work doesn't involve creating items, but being able to sell them and deliver them on time. That said, pick up the cap boosters from your hangar here post-haste and bring them to my buyer. Oh, okay. Maybe he does? Okay, cool, yeah. We get our cap boosters back, we put them in our venture, and yeah, let's go sell them to the other guy and dock. Alright, start jumping. So this is kind of emulating like building and then delivering your goods to a trade hub to sell it at a trade hub or alternatively like our scenario we're like station trade region trade solar system trading that's not really a thing there's like station trading where you stay in one system and buy and sell in that system and then region trading which is the other main thing is where you deliver we you buy goods in a certain region and deliver them over to another region because the market browser in game you can only see one region at a time, the region that you're in. So, like, you might know of a cool area that's still pretty close, but the prices are drastically higher for this certain item in another region. And you can use that knowledge to make money. Uh, that said, there are... If you think to yourself, is there a third-party app? Is there a way I can figure this out online? Is there a third-party app that can help me? The answer is always yes. Eve is a lot of outside-the-game dev work by a lot of different people. If you're looking for some information of something related to the game, it's out there. I guarantee it. So there, there are sites, there are programs that will help you region trade if that's the thing that you want to do. It will look at items and it will look at how far away you could make X amount of profit and you can find your own niche and all that good stuff. All right, he's got another mission for us, but we got to, uh, we got to go to him. So right click set destination on dock and we're gonna just warp right on back to him. Warp drive active. Um, previously when we were looking at the, if we were going to build the cap boosters and you saw those other minerals. So those other minerals come from other rocks that you can mine. Every different kind of rock that you can mine has a different ratio of available minerals in it. Warp drive active. Um, which we'll probably see, um... It looks like they probably want us to build a uh, shuttle upcoming next. So we'll look into it when we do that. Yeah. Veldspar has always 100% tritanium, I believe. Not even just the beginner stuff. Request Other rocks, like Kernite, I think has a lot of pyrite and something in it 
there's tables, there's charts, there's ways to figure all that out. There's handy dandy graphics. Um, yeah. If you look, if you start to get into mining, you can learn all about that. So, all right. A friend of mine needs a fast vessel, so I want you to take this blue print copy and construct a shuttle for him. Oh, and don't bother buying it from the market. This needs to be manufactured by you. Okay, so this is a specific item that I guess you just can't sell in the game because it is specifically for this tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and in our inventory. We're going to scroll down to our new blueprint, double-click it, and oh, looks like it just requires tritanium. Takes four minutes to make. This is easy peasy. We've done this a million times. Just click start and we'll wait the four minutes. In the meantime, we can look at this. So it needs pyrite and mexalon. How do we get pyrite and mexalon? We click on it. It says what it is. And then it says where we can get it. In high security state of star systems, we need to mine scordite and pyroxyres to be able to get to refine some pyrite out of it. And then low, null, wormhole. And the rare ore mordinium also contains significant quantities. It's primarily found in null and wormhole space, containing a A0 blue star small sky stars, as well as surveyed locations on the borders of Empire and null set space. So there are these like rare ore sites that you can find. They're pretty cool. If you find one, it's actually worth mining because you get real good stuff out of it. Uh, barely worth mining, I should note barely uh this is all the stuff that you can make with it it's a big long list because pyrite is a very basic ingredient but yeah if we wanted to get it we would mine some scordite and pyroxyres we just we would warp to some asteroid belts or some or anoms um anomalies and get it for mexalin we need pyroxyres and, and plagioclast so if we get if we hit some pyroxyres we would be able to get both of them so that's probably what we'd want to hit for this. Cool beans. Mm -hmm. All right. Our air career program. Um, do we want to like look and track any of these things? I don't think for right now. We have a pretty good idea about like what we want to be doing. Uh, the graduation reward. So once we get all of the things, we get for industry. We get a bunch of we get four cool industry skins for the venture retriever procurer and corbiter, which are like your basic mining entry points. We can start thinking about the Sinesis. So, for our next thing, it's going to be the Sisters of Eve Epic Arc. And we are going to be using, I believe, the Sinesis, which is a ship. Uh, wait. Okay. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you don't... If you filter anything... Then I guess you can't find it right off the bat. Uh, a little weird, but whatever. I guess that's the the perks of a new account. <laughs> uh, all right, Sinesis. We can click this button to simulate the ship, and this is what we're working with. We're not going to be flying a Sinesis. <laughs> it costs twenty six million. That's too many millions for us. Um. Uh, Okay. Cool. In that case, we probably need to be looking at being able to fly the Corax. We received a Cormorant, but that uses hybrid turrets. And I think I would just feel better using light missiles. Yeah. Because we're getting trained in the light missiles. We can just always sell our Cormorant as well. But we do need to actually learn some Kaldari Destroyer. Uh, 
Um, what? Oh, nice. They actually have a build for us, except for we still need some skills. Weapons upgrade 4 to be able to use the T2 ballistic control system. Um, honestly, we'll probably fly this. We need a, a CPU skill, which is going to be part of the Magic 14. And I know everyone will have access to this. Doesn't look half bad. So this is a community fitting, so someone that like theoretically knows what they're doing has made it and it's been approved and honestly it all looks totally fine yeah we'll probably fly this uh, but the drones there are actually no drone bays in this comes with some missiles cool 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 so we're not going to worry too much about drones anymore. We're going to get better at Kaldari Destroyer. Uh, I don't think we need four. I think probably just... Oh, actually, I mean, yeah, we're definitely going to be eventually using, like, the Jackdaw. So, never mind. Yeah, that'll be... Four will be fine. All right, our shuttle's ready. We can deliver this and then complete this mission. All right, turns out one of my production assistants was a spy for the enemy. He's gone into hiding, so I need you to draw him out. You'll act as a decoy, mining until enemy forces turn up, destroying them and bringing the spy back to me. You may keep whatever ore I find out there. Make sure you use a mining laser so they'll notice you out there. Alright, so we gotta mine until we get ambushed, and then we will murder them. Doesn't seem too difficult. Drive active. Oh, this guy's very right. Uh, we also need to get positive trig and income standings, which is honestly what we will do pretty much immediately after we get to Jita. I think that is on today's docket because that is an important thing for everyone to do, and it's very easy. Let's go to the mining tab. Oh look, a bunch of Kernite. Let's release our drone. Start mining. Oh, I can do a lot of things with the right click. Oh, that's something I even I didn't know. You can use your right click menu, radial menu to um, control your drones as well. What I was looking for is this settings. So if you have drones in space and you use this little cog wheel, you can say auto attack and focus fire. Generally, you want both of those checked. Um, so like your drones will kind of have a mind of their own. Uh, they'll attack things that they deem as hostile. 
which is generally accurate. Die, bitch, die. All right. Oh, and then we need to open cargo here, loot him, and now we can dock up. Oh, drive. oh, here we go, here we go. Whenever this happens, whenever you forget to bring your drone in and you start warping, you'll get that little notice there. Immediately spam control spacebar. Again, control space is what stops your ship, ship stopping. Um, it's a very useful binding if you are accidentally about to warp when you don't want to. Uh, also, when you are warping, so say you're in a fleet and you accidentally hit jump gate, um, so you start warping and you would immediately jump upon landing and you don't want that. Someone says gate is red or don't jump. Um, then you hit control space. So now ship is stopping. That means the next immediate command is once you get out of warp, you will stop whatever you're doing. So we clicked dock in this instance. We will no longer dock because we hit that control stop. And if the command that your FC give, gave was don't dock anymore, stop docking, hit control space, you're good to go. It's very important. Requested. Happens all the time. Docking request accepted. Oh, I need more tea. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to just run a little ad for my Twitch viewers, and I'm going to get some more tea. Be right back in like a minute. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. Where were we? Completing a mission. Excellent. All right, we're already on the final industrialist mission. That went very quickly. All right. Our final assignment. You're going to bring me a full-fledged frigate. I'll give you a blueprint copy with more than enough runs for this task. If you choose to use it, finding the resources is up to you. But time is money, and however you choose to acquire the ship is fine by me. He's very right there. Time is money. We need to make a Bantam. Luckily for us, we already have one by doing some other mission quest chain. So, we're going to go ahead and just complete this mission. Good job, us. Congratulations! With the successful production of that, Mantam, you've proven that you have what it takes. I hate to see you go, but you have mastered all the challenges I have for you. There's plenty of mining agents out there who would be happy to employ someone like you who can get the job done. You can find them in the agency mining agents, or if you are interested in broadening your skills into other areas, you can start a conversation with any of the other career agents here in station. Best of luck in the future, my friends. Stick with the Republic, and you'll do well. Alrighty. That, my dear friends is all of the career agent missions done. Which is what I suggest highly to all of you aspiring capsuleers to do just the same. Uh, let's check the Bantam blueprint. Let's see what it takes. All right, so it looks like the Pyrite and Mexilon, which we already know about, Isogen. Where would we have acquired some Isogen? Um, oh, oh. 
Isogen is only found in low security status systems. So I feel like this is kind of a older mission. So like they redistributed where the where the minerals are found in and like what rocks are found in. And it seems kind of rude for them to try and get new players to go out and farm Isogen in low sec. I don't like that one bit. Um because that's very dangerous for new players. <laughs> You'll probably die. And then you have to get it back here? Like, what? What? Uh, let's view market details on the Isogen. Looks like in station it's 11... Or wait, 470. Which is basically the cheapest. So I would for sure... Recommend just buying your Isogen. And station. Or doing the other career age missions until you have a Bantam that you can just give them that way. That's definitely what I recommend. Just you doing the other career age missions first. Whatever one give us the Bantam. Okay. So. Now what do we do? We're lost. We're hopeless. What do we do? Um... We kind of need to destroy some capsuleers, and we need to scan some signatures. But let's first... Yeah. We're going to go to Jita first. Let's go to Jita. And then... <laughs> Honestly, we might do a T-Zero Abyss. So that we can destroy these capsuleers. We're, we're going to scan some signatures. Oh wait, we can scan signatures super easy, like right here in this system. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hop into our Heron. Make sure that we have equipped... We don't have anything equipped. <laughs> go to our item hanger. Uh, we just need to scan. We don't actually need to go to the system. So we're going to put a probe launcher. And we're going to put probes in. And we're going to go ahead and undock. Alright, launch our probes. We're going to hit F9 and Alt P. Bring up our probe scanner and our uh, solar system window. And. We hit V for directional scan. I meant to hit B, but I just hit V. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move this to a separate window. Directional scanning is extremely important in various areas of the game. A little less so in high sec, but it still can be quite useful. Um, but right now we're just going to close this and we'll deal with directional scanning later. So we're going to hit B or beta and start scanning. <laughs> Alright, that's successfully scanned five signatures and that was two of our opportunities. Uh, well, that's the air career program. Oh, actually, we have these reward bundles What's in the reward bundle? Probably one of them has the expert system. And then, oh, one of them has the range finding array. Not bad, not bad. That will help us in our scanning efforts. Let's go ahead and move all these over to our home station. And yeah, now we have the industrialists. Which will help us if we are looking to move things are... Oh, we actually need to train up the badger. So, let's go ahead and redock. Oh, we actually we flew away from the station a little bit. And it's fine, we'll get there soon enough. Uh, we wanted to go to opportunities, not air. And now... We have 
successfully done two of our daily goals, which means we get our daily reward bonus. So we can just go to rewards. We can claim all here. Good job, us. Make sure you try and do two of your daily rewards every day. Get that okay, ISK bonus or the the SP bonus. It's, it's pretty. It's it's pretty okay, good for new players. Accepted. Quite good, even. Um. So yeah, even if you're just starting, maybe maybe log in every day. Maybe see if there's two things that you can easily do. Like we literally did this in what like a minute. Some of them are harder, some of them are easier. Just just is what it is. Okay. So now we're gonna need to fly a badger. Oh good. It looks like we can at least fly the, and hop in the badger. The badger is a transport ship. As we can see here, it has a cargo hold of four thousand meters at level one. Uh, one of its traits is bonuses, is that for every level of Kaldari hauler we get, we get an upgrade to our cargo capacitor and our inertia modifier, which makes us align and go faster, like warp faster. Um, well, the inertia doesn't make us warp faster, it makes us get into warp faster. Uh, and its roll bonus is that it has a 90% reduction to effective distance traveled for jump fatigue. Don't worry at all about that, that is some null sec stuff that you probably will not deal with for a long, long time. Um, yeah, don't worry about that roll bonus. But basically, it's a ship that hauls other ship. That's its main job. It only has one turret hard point, so it's not very good at doing damage to anything. It doesn't get any bonuses to damaging stuff. It doesn't have any drone bandwidth. It does have a lot of mid slots for defense. Maybe utility if you're really feeling spicy, but no, it's, it's just defense. And low slots for, again, maybe defense and aligning ability there. Um, and what we are going to do now is transport all of our stuff, hopefully, over to Jita, where the main trade hub is. And when this, was, this process is going to be a lot easier for us because we chose a Kaldari character. It doesn't matter what race you are. I think you still should do this. Go to Jita. Um, it will just take longer to get there, depending on where you start from. For Amar characters, um, there is one caveat, and that is do not go through Azkaban, uh, which is Abazon. Abazon is a low sex system. It is the most direct path from Amar to Jita. There is one low sex system. It is always heavily murderous. Um, just just go the high sec route, uh, which I will show you how to do. Um, yeah, it, it'll take a little longer, but do it anyways. Alternatively, if you are an Amar character, you can base out of Amar. So Jita is the main trade hub for Kaldari and the game. Um, Galente has Dodixi as their local main trade hub. Mimitar has Heck and sort of Rens as two major trade hubs. And then Amar has Amar as their main trade hub. Um, so those are the four Empire's main trade hubs. There are some other stuff. Don't worry about it. Um, if you were Mimitar, Galente, or Kaldari, definitely just go to Jita and base out of there. It's by far the best, and it's pretty close by. If you were in Amar, you can be in Amar... Prices are a little shittier than in Jita, but it's close by, and also there's plenty of stuff to do still in Amar for the most part. It's not the worst, it's not the best. I would say just make the trek up. And uh, honestly, what you can do is haul all of your stuff to Amar, and then sell all of it in Amar, and then just bring like a fast... Um, shuttle bring a shuttle up to jita and then you can set your home base to jita and then you'll just be like everyone else that's actually what i would recommend um but also we are going to be going to the blood saint stars which is more in galente space so yeah but after we do the blood stars we'll be we'll just move back up to jita
yeah. So, put your stuff in Gita. Or sell it in Amar. Now that that's covered, <laughs> how do we how do we get all of our stuff to Gita? I'm so glad you asked. We have a bunch of ships that are um, packaged, which means they have a number next to them. They can be stacked if they are of like kind. And we have a bunch, like here, uh, and we have a bunch of unpackaged ships, or fitted ships even, that don't have the number, and we could like hop into them. They have modules into them. And when they are unpackaged, they are much, much larger, 18,000 M3 versus when it's packaged 2500 m3 but i am now immediately seeing a problem that we are going to be facing our cargo hold is 4000 we can at best put in one frigate i kind of expected our cargo hold to be larger than just 4,000. I hate to say it, but that's what I expected. That just isn't that much. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, how big level do I have to raid the boss that drops the Titan? <laughs> also, can I do a little tank? Gita, get out of here. Get out of here. Ooh, silly troll. Um. Okay. So, new plan. We're gonna sell. We're gonna sell all of our stuff. Or do we just base out of here? I don't want to base. Out. No, we need. We need to buy modules that we're gonna find a lot easier in Gita. If we control A, select all, we're going to go ahead and repackage everything. Uh, and then right click stack all. We go to our item hanger. Our item hanger only has 400 M3 of stuff, and its value is at about 3 million. Uh, we can go ahead and select all. We're going to hit repair. We're going to select all, repair item. Looks like nothing is damaged. Great. After we've done that, we should be able to repackage all of our items. It just makes things look a little bit prettier. Uh, and then select all again, and then stack all again. We actually didn't need to select all there. We could just we can stack all from over here. But all right. Now we got all this stuff. Let's go ahead and move it into our badger. We can bring along one ship. Herons are 600,000. Comrade is 1 million, but it's twice as big. Badger is huge, but 800. So I guess Heron it is. All right, we're going to bring along one Heron. Um, asking for a friend, does interact mean please no gank? Um, honestly, if you want to gank, that's fine. What I mean by don't interact is I mean don't give me any money. Um, don't help me in any way. And don't, like... So, also, like, the eventual goal is that, like, this is a spy account. I want to get in some corporations. And so, like, I need a clean record, right? So, I don't want anyone to give me any money. I don't want any any outside influence. If you want to just, like, show up and gank me... That's fine. That's just like that's just like killboard stuff. Uh, yeah. So I haven't started yet. Awesome. Welcome in, Mr. Grateful. What lesson should I learn right now from your predicament? Um, you you should learn. I thought I was being clever because I knew that we got a hauling ship at the end of all of these chains. So I thought I was just going to haul these small ships in my hauling ship. I forgot that the hauling ship that you first get is not a lot of M3. So the what you should learn from this is that your basic hauling ships are not large enough to really move ships around. They're large enough for modules and like materials, not ships. 
Should I just fly to Jita first and start from there? No. So, okay. So what you should do, Mega Grateful, is first watch episode one and two, and then episode three, which we're in right now, of this series. Uh, but basically, you do the tutorial, and then you do all of the career agent mission paths. So all of these guys, you when they all have their red little things, career path already completed, that's when you're good to go. Um, and then you can head to Jita and start basing out of Jita. Set your home station to Jita. Um, from Jita, we're going to set up a... We're going to find a ship to fly and do the Sisters of Eve career... Or Sisters of Eve epic arc, which you can find um, in your agency panel or probably also your op yeah, your opportunities. Epic arcs, the Bloodstained Stars, you're going to want to do that next, which is what we're going to be doing next as well. Um, this is just kind of like extra money that we're losing out on a little bit, but we're just going to sell all this stuff here in the station and we're going to call it good. Uh, Mr. Offspoken says, do not interact. Is this a zero to hero character? Uh, more or less it's a zero to hero character. Um, but like not in the sense that like we're gonna we're interacting with the game, with the players of the game and everything. We're not doing everything by ourselves. So like all my belongings minus the holes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> go through apps. <laughs> no, do not go through Amazon. Alright, so we can shift click all these ships. I mean go to sell items. They go to immediate. Um, if we look here, we can see 13% loss, 12%, five, 6, 25. So like 25 is a little much. Let's go ahead and take that off. 20 is a little much. Let's take that off. I'm fine with these losses. The Ibis is like, is your basic Corvette. So like that doesn't actually matter or count. Um, yeah. So let's sell this. We'll get an extra 1.3 million. And then for these two ships, we're going to right click view market details. And then we're going to right click and sell this item. So here we're going to change instead of immediate, go to three months. There's absolutely no reason to do day to month um, selections. CC, please fix this. Make it make it mean something. But if you're not doing immediate, you're doing three months. And then you can change the price here. We're going to see that our lowest competitor is going at 1.97. Um, so we're going to just do 1196000. It takes a little bit of money to set up. And when it does sell, we have a little bit of sales tax here. But that's fine. We're going to go ahead and sell this. It says that we're about to sell one item. Uh, yeah. Don't ask me again. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the Heron. View market details so we can see our competition. Sell this item. It defaults to three months because the last thing we sold was at three months. We can see in station people are selling it for six forty-eight. So we're going to sell ours at six forty-eight zero zero zero. All right, and we're going to just hope that those sell. The tax is the reason to list it shorter, uh, but it's not. It's the same tax. Here. Uh, so at three months, it's 148. Three days, it's, it's 148. A week, 148. Two weeks, 148. It's the same. Remember to click the do not ask me again on every single one of those prompts. Hey, what's up? We got a big old raid coming in. Who's raiding us? It's Moonwolf. Thank you so much for that raid, Moonwolf. Welcome in, welcome in. How was your stream? Wait, did we get double raided? Double raid, rain too. With 30 viewers. What's up? Thank you, both of you guys. Thank you so much for, for coming in. What's up with the double raid? How are both of y'all doing? What'd you guys get up to? 
We have just completed all of our career agent missions, so we are now on our way heading over to Jita in just a second here. We have stored all of our belongings in our Badger, uh, including one ship, because apparently that is all you can store in a Badger. We learned that the hard way. We sold the rest of our ships, uh, slash are selling the rest of our ships in the station. Hopefully they sell. And I think we're ready to go. We could put stuff on this Badger, but it's going to be a very easy trip to Jita, so I don't think we really need to outfit it with anything. Uh, all right. Uh, we can untrack these opportunities because we've done them now. We're going to undock. Moonwolf did some Nullsec exploit with a theme song quiz in the end. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so, Jita. We've talked about it. What is it? I'm so glad you asked. Up here in the top left, where you can search for anything, we're going to search for Jita. And there are lots of different things. But we are going to go to Solar Systems, and we can see Jita right here. Go ahead and... Um, yeah, we'll talk about the station when we get there. Close that, and we can go to our general tab again and start jumping Flight along. Active. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking to you, Jita. I'm talking about Jita. So the thing about haulers is that they're pretty slow. So this will take a little bit longer than if we were flying in a frigate. But we do have this lovely looking badger hauler. A lovely Kaldari ship. And while we are on our way there... Oh right, I was going to say we could make a ship fitting. But we are going to just be using the ship fitting that they have for us. And we're going to hope that this works out peachy keen. Our money is up to 17 million. Awesome. Not bad, not bad. You say, wow, I started this game in 2010, and I've always thought the fees for listing longer were higher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one would think it would make sense, wouldn't it? But that's not how it is. Badger needs dancing anime girls on the side to look at why you crawl in the warp tunnel. Yeah, um, Kaldari Prime Pony Club. I believe has made some wonderful badger skins. All unofficial, um, except for maybe. What if? What if some customization? Thanks so much for that follow, Grantonulus. And welcome all you guys, all you new raiders. Welcome in, welcome in. My name is Nth Dimensional, and normally I do um, a variety of things on stream. Uh, deliver a lot of information, teach a lot of good things about uh, scanning, hacking, exploration, wormhole, combat, uh, industry, station trading, things of that variety. Uh, so join in, enjoy the stream. I have a YouTube as well, exclamation mark YouTube for that, where there's a lot of helpful videos for you to check out. Like, comment, subscribe as always. Uh, but right now what we're doing is we are doing a full New player experience walkthrough, very detailed, explaining everything I do, why I'm doing it, going into the, the juicy details when relevant. Um, we are now on episode three. It has taken us three episodes to get to uh, the career agent missions, or get through all the career agent missions, but lots of really good info in there. And if you are new to the game, even if you're old to the game, I'm pretty sure you will learn something. You should be learning something every day in New Eden. There's a lot out there. And never stop. Never stop learning. Mega Grateful. Also, welcome to the club. Hisku with the little snowman. Little, little snow guy. Um, can we fly the Korax now? So this is a community fitting. Seems decent enough. Uh, we need CPU. We need CPU. So if we go to our skills, we go to engineering, 
generally your your stuff with power grid and CPU uh, stuff like that is going to be an engineering tab drive. Uh, and it looks like electronics upgrades um, this is stuff this is for modules CPU management this gives us 5% bonus to ship output per level uh, and we are missing so we're missing 25 number value but percentage if you hover over the CPU thing we can see that we're actually uh, at 110% so getting just 5% would not be super helpful um, but I know this is kind of where knowing is very important there's a whole lot of skills in this game and if you don't know all of the skills how are you supposed to know what exists it's kind of kind of rough kind of rough uh, but if we go to our missiles I believe there is a um, oh maybe I'm wrong I thought there was a skill that reduced missile CPU requirements Is that an engineering? Weapons upgrade? Oh, is it just weapons upgrade? It's not specifically we missiles? Uh, Alright, weapons upgrades. Yeah, here we go. Of gunnery and uh, upgrade modules. 5% reduction per weapon skill, the CPU. Of turrets, launchers, and smart bombs. Super useful. Uh, so yeah, this takes 3 days and 8 hours to train, which is just too long for us. So we're going to go ahead and right click this and we're going to apply skill points. This is why it is very useful to have these skill points ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and apply this. Skill training completed. And now that we've done that, it looks like it was not enough. Not even close to enough. So now if we go to our engineering. Hmm, what is causing all this CPU? of capacitor batteries our capacitor does not use that many our shield hardener uses a fair bit and our ballistics control hmm Not a great fit in your opinion? I agree. Like, that's supposed to be the new bro fit, and, like, it clearly needs a handful of upgrades off the bat. Maybe we just, maybe we change the fit. I think we probably actually just changed the fit. Weapons upgrade is still a very good thing to train into. You're going to get it eventually. Sooner is good, too. A new bro Korak should fit passive shields. All right, all right. So we've made it to Jita. Good job, us. Generally, it's a bad idea to just sit in space because it makes you a little bit juicier of a target for gankers. They can just see you and start planning to get you. Um, so don't sit in space like this, especially next to a gate. Bad form. Uh, now that we're in Jita, we can see that there are a whole lot of stations in Jita. These boxes, these square boxes, are NPC stations. Um, and which one do we want? I'm so glad you asked. We want the trade hub. So if we look at what type this is, we can see what its name is or where it is. And if we look at its type, there's a very peculiar one called Jita 4.4. It's called the Jita trade hub. If we right click it, we can go dock it to it. And then you can see the glory that is Jita 4.4. Except for the sun's kind of really harshing our vibe. It is a community fit. It is. I thought it would be better. I I wanted to believe in it, but I guess I guess we shouldn't believe in it. <laughs> All right. Lo and behold, the crown jewel of New Eden. Jita. Four four. Ooh, Look at all of its glory. 
And there's a whole lot of people here. Docking request accepted. All these little guys here, those are people. And by glory, he means the crap hole of the universe. <laughs> yeah. Is the community fit just something off a website? Uh, no. So the community fits are very specifically um, members of the community, generally EVE partners, uh, submitted some fits when they started this program. I don't know if they've done anything else from it. And they they pretty much just got put in the game <laughs> as community fittings. Some of them are good and valid. Some of them are not so good and valid. All right, so we're going to move all of our cargo from our hauler over to our item hangar. And we're going to keep these two ships because they might be useful for us at some point. And now let's make a Corax. So we go hardware, we go to hard high slot. Um, actually, you know what? Hmm. I think I'm going to start the whole Sisters of Eve thing next episode. Give me, I'll be right back. I need to figure out my plans. Um, so yeah, I'll be right back. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now. So pause your fucking game.
Alright, I have returned. Sorry about that. I have dinner plans that I need to figure out. Or they're being figured out. Alright. Jita is full of ganker scammers and spammers. It's the Moss Eisley of Eve. It, yeah, it very much is. Uh, anything in local that happens in Jita, do not pay any attention to it. It is 100% scams. Alright, but for our Korax. We probably have about an hour of streaming, more streaming. Okay. Yeah, we can start Sisters of Eve. It's going to be... Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering if there's anything I want to do in Jita beforehand. And I don't think so. So, let's make a Korax. Alternatively, if you are a of a different race to start off with, you could fly... Mm, nothing from Amar. I mean, like, yeah, like, you could fly any of these destroyers into the Sisters of Eve um, arc. August would be pretty de decent. Um, but because I'm focusing, and I think you should also focus on missiles, like we talked about earlier, um, I'm just looking for any missile ships. So a Talwar would be a great choice if you chose Mimitar. Thrasher, I don't recommend using projectile turrets until you're highly skilled. Um, yeah. So like Korax, Talwar, both great choices. Um, honestly let's see damage explosion velocity and max velocity versus damage reduction to micro warp drive and velocity honestly the tower is the best shot choice for this but we already learned our Kaldari destroyer up to two whatever Dragoon is nice missiles and drones even if it bonuses newts and nos yeah does okay. Does the dragoon have um, missile slots? So if we click onto it, if we click fitting, we can see. Oh yeah, it does have three launcher hard points. So these uh, Nos and Newt options aren't. They're like more PVP options. So I kind of just dismissed it off of that. But yeah, drones actually. Dragoon gets drones and rockets. That's exactly what we like. That's exactly what we like. Is it difficult to get a Jeet if you start at Matari? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, oh, I did need to talk about the high sec. Okay, yeah. So your your routing settings are going to default to prefer safer, which is going to keep you out of low sex systems, which is what you want as a new player. So, yeah, just keep it as prefer safer. And then you won't go into low sec, and then, yeah, it's super easy to get here. Nozzles are occasionally useful for PvE for cap recovery. That's true. Do we just switch... Um, we only have, yeah. You know what? Fuck it. I think we do switch. Because we don't need explosion velocity. We're already running light missiles. All right. So we're just going to remove Kaldari Destroyer out of our training queue. And we're going to go to Amar. So first we need... So for when you're leveling up holes, you need three at least of the previous size hole. So we need three levels in Amar Frigate. Um, let's see. Let's check on market. 
Yeah, super cheap. And then we're going to just... Um, we're just going to inject this. Oh, I bought the skill book, so I have to inject the skill. And then I can just apply skill points. Skill training completed. 500, 2500. Skill training completed. And 13,000? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then destroyer. So again, click this, check market. Market is 104,000. It's pocket change for us. Um, oh, we need to inject. And it's literally this easy. It is literally this easy to change or to learn a new race's ships. Uh, if you hit shift and then drag this, it will drag a new level of it in. Kojesus, what's up? Welcome in. You're still deciding between Kaldari and Mimitar? Just, yeah, just choose based on what your character will look like. That is the most important thing between choosing a race. Everything else is 100% modifiable, or uh, swappable. So now instead of a Korax, we're going to be getting a Dragoon. Um... Now I'm second guessing myself. Damn, we could have fucking seven launchers. Mm. Um, why don't we just make two two ships and see which one we like more? All right. So first, our missile systems. We're gonna be using light missiles. Um, compact is good for fitting. Ample is probably good just for a little bit more damage. Um, honestly, I kind of feel like compact, but we'll see what these do. Alright, we still have plenty of fitting. Uh, we can take inspiration from this enforcer. We're going to click and hold it and move it to a chat window, which will make a link for it. That we'll be able to show, once we click it, we can show what it is fitting in its, like, window. Um, and this just gives us a good idea about what we might want on it. I do think an afterburner is probably a pretty good plan. Um, one, in it, one MN is the correct size for um, frigates and destroyers. Cruisers go up to 10. Um... So whenever possible, we no longer want to be using like just the base thing. A 1MN Afterburner 1 isn't very good. A meta version of it is going to pretty much always be better, which is going to be like the uh, monopropellant or the compact. Um, so we're probably going to go with the monopropellant and basically go with the non-compact version until you run out of fitting. And then we can make things smaller when we need that extra fitting. Alright, so we have some sort of propulsion. Now we need some kind of um, tanking. So buffer fitting does seem like a pretty good idea. We can rely on our uh, natural defenses as well as just having an extra big buffer. Um, it will we'll reduce our capacitor needs as well, which is good. But before do we do that, we're going to actually go to our low slots, and we're going to just put in some damage. So, ballistics control systems is what we use for missiles. All the four, or all the different uh, weapon systems have specific weapon upgrades modules. Why? Don't ask me. Is it a little bit dumb? A little bit, yeah. Um, could they make this easier? They sure could. Because they all do the same thing. They're all the fucking same. They're just different because they're different. Um, 
Ballistics Control System 2, the Tech 2, we got the skill that we needed. What it, we got the weapon upgrade. Oh, that's another really good reason to get the weapon upgrade for. This was definitely a worthwhile purchase. Um, is because now we can use the T2 version of our weapons damage. So that's a good plan there. And now we're going to fill out these three mid, mid slots with some shields. We're going to go to shield extenders. When possible, use a larger shield extender than your ship. Um, it looks like this is not really going to be possible because of our fitting. So we're just going to go to small and put that in. And here we're starting to run into some CPU issues. We still have plenty of power grid. Things that use power grid are usually sized. So things like small, medium, large is going to dictate how much power grid they use. Things that use CPU typically are not sized and always use like the same amount of CPU. Then again, size things do use some CPU and some CPU things use some amounts of power grid. It's a general thing. Just ACR rig it. Um, auxiliary control, is that what it is? Is that what you're talking about? What is ACR? So rigs are these three slots. We haven't ever used any rigs in the game before, but now that we are making a ship out of Jita, um, we can use these because we can purchase them. Um, auxiliary current router. Yeah, that's what it is. So that is an engineering rig. It will give us more power grid if I am correct. So we're going to be using small because we're a small ship. Um, and ancillary current router, they come in T2 and T1 versions. The, for the rigs specifically, um, the T1 versions are always going to be much cheaper than the T2 versions, I believe is correct. Um, and the, like you don't always want the T2 version. Sometimes, like especially with large ships, definitely with large ships. I don't know how much it is in like smaller ship stuff but this is four million isk extra which is like that's going to double the cost of our ship if we put that on that sounds like too much right that sounds like too much so probably just a small ancillary uh we have an issue here we need shield upgrades three um so if we do decide to go with this ship we will just inject the shield upgrades three it only takes 14 hours um so it's probably worth injecting and we want our ship now right so this is a need versus a want if we do use this ship and it's something that's going to always be useful you're you're going to definitely get shield upgrades um so yeah this gives us more power grid a substantial amount of power grid actually so can we put a medium shield on now? Um, yeah, let's take this one off. And if we compact it, we still need more power grid. Dang. We could put power in actually, yeah. So there's a low slot module which gives you power. Um, it's an engineering. So engineering, again, is going to be like power grid, co uh, CPU, capacitor, things like that. And for small ships, auxiliary power controls are actually pretty useful because they give you a flat amount of power. Um, whereas these, like, uh, power diagnostic system and remote control units give you, like, an extra percentage of your power. And when you're a small ship, that percentage is low, and the flat is more than the percentage. Um, so if we put this on, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And now we can put shields. And now we can put a medium. All right, medium compact. Um, we only have 0.4 power grid here now. 
which is certainly a bit of an issue um, because we need basically we need two more power grid because like all modules pretty much are going to use one power grid at least uh, but we'll keep this here for now Secret prize, Koji's. Um, you spelled secret prize wrong. Try again. Um, so things that might be useful. We need to figure out some stats about our missiles. So we're gonna put, we're gonna preload some charges into them. If we go to charges and then click on our missile launcher, that will bring up the missiles that work with our launcher. The faction missiles are probably still worthwhile as a new character. Um, yeah, so Kaldari Navy is, hopefully you remember this, Kaldari Navy missiles are generally the go-to standard if you're going to be using faction missiles. Faction missiles are almost always useful because they go further, they do more damage, they're just better, and you can use them without the T2 skills. Um, so, I don't know if Mjolnir Nova is going to be a little bit better for us. I think we're fighting... Uh, I don't know what we're fighting. We're just going to go with Mjolnir. So if we preload some Mjolnir... Actually, how much did that cost? So we're at 9.5 million. Okay, that costs like 300,000 isk. That's fine. Yeah. You say, honestly, I would just fix the fitting with rigs and keep the double BCS post-compact one or two since you only have two lows and three rigs. Also... Um, ballistics control systems gives both damage and fire rate, whereas missile rigs only give one or the other. Uh, yes, Jita, but if we put in one, um, one of each in the rigs, it actually works out better. And because we got a lot of rig slots, I think this is the way to go. Trust, trust. Mr. Softspoken says, I do the whole arc with EM damage except for Dagon and then switch to explosive. All right, cool. So Dagon is uh, certified explosive. So we're going to actually add some Nova, which is explosive, into the cargo hold. Our missile's easiest. Is that what you were busting on for this ship for SOE? Yes. Um, so missiles are easy to use, easy to understand, and are very effective because you can easily switch their damage type. Um, missiles, missiles and drones, baby. Missiles and drones. That's what you want. That's definitely what I recommend. Double DPS rigs takes all the rig fitting, though. So you're throwing a rig. Does it? Does it? You're crazy. No way both of them are 200. Um, which one is the... That's SIG radius... That's velocity, missile damage. Uh, all right. And then fuel clash is flight time. Rate of fire, rate of fire. We want rate of fire. Oh, you know what? You, sir, not crazy. I hate it when they're not crazy. All right, we're just going to do that one then. But, like, we would have to use... Yeah, we'd have to use two rigs to get the same as one. And then we get extra with the one, yeah. Or, no, it's the same. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we have to either use two rigs and one or two, or one and two and... Uh, I like this one more. Meh. Um, actually, no, I don't. Fine. You're right. I hate it. I hate it when you're right. 
Oh, except you're not right. We're going to have to make one of these a T2. Oh, ew, gross. No, I don't want a T2. Because they're 4 million. In this has to be a compact. So if we go show info here, and then we unfit this module, it's easiest to just change variations this way. And then you can drag the compact there. Our power grid's at 0.6. Um, honestly, what we might do is we might level up a power grid skill. Because that will get us just a little bit more, which will help us with fill these two mid slots. Um, we want... I don't know what damage type they're doing. Generally, I would say we want to bring EM damage to... So, like, shield ships, Kaldari ships specifically, always have 0% uh, EM shield resistance because that's their resistance thingy. Um, so, generally, it's good to fill your resistance hole. But the thing is, I don't know what we're going to be shot at with all throughout the Sisters of Eve arc. I think we're going to be shot at with everything. Hmm. Also, our missiles go out to 30 kilometers. Our targeting range is 50 kilometers. Um, that's fine. And we're doing about 90 deeps. Um, I think we need to be doing more deeps to kill Dagon. Uh-oh. Not going to think about that too hard. Oh, once we get more skills up, though, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So shield hardener, we can use a multi-spec. Um, that is really eating my CPU. Holy smokes. I don't think we fit this. I don't think we just fit the medium. I don't think there's a world where that works out. I like never use these things. It still eats up a lot of CPU. Um, we would need a CPU rig, which you know isn't the end of the world. Uh, that would be... So when I hover over this, you can see the flashing on the rigs. That means it uses too much rigging space. Um, so we would have to go for the one. Is there a reason not to rocket fit? I don't like rockets. I don't think they're good. So we're not training rockets. We're training light missiles. My dang power grid. Um, these missile launchers have to be compact. That's the only way I'm going to like be able to pull this off. But then they're going to be doing even less damage. This is where a handy dandy YouTube search is. So, EVE Online. 
Sisters of Eve epic art. So at the end, spoiler alert, uh, we're going to need to kill a man called Dagon. Um, and... <sighs> Let's see. Okay. Dagon's ship prepares his shield and armor at about 100 EHP. So you'll need to bring a ship that can do more than 100 DPS. Depending on the damage type you're dealing, you may need to adjust this figure. Lasers will need upward of 120 to break Dagon, for example. Um, okay, so best damage to deal is explosive and kinetic. And he's also going to be doing explosive Thank you and for kinetic. So we need to you're resist an absolute that. Absolute legend. So, okay, so we're fine. By the time we get to Dagon, we will have our skills upgraded. Maybe we even bring some drugs with us. Um, also, thanks so much, Gonk, for the for the sub. Big hearts to you. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now. Ad time. So pause your fucking game. Good thing Goink doesn't have to see this ad. Haha. <laughs> um... You can also range tank him 30 kilometers and he can't reach you. Yeah. You love my YouTube videos, Boro. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying them. I'm not going long, though, because I think that's going to not be very good for the rest of everything. Uh, do I get a T2 version of this? Do I just bite the friggin' bullet? It makes our ship expensive so that we cannot replace it. If we die, uh, let's filter by remaining. We can have oh a basic. Oh, never mind. Way too expensive. A civilian shield booster. That's not a bad choice. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want this T2 rig. Okay. Um let's so we're going to we're going to drag the name of this Corex fit this to a chat window. That's going to save it so we can easily come back to it. Let's look at now the dragoon. So we're going to focus up on our drone. Um, so we have 25 bandwidth and 75 drone bay, which means essentially it can fit three flights of five. Um, but to use this effectively, we're really going to need drones five. Which is going to take a while. Nine days. Um, man, that ain't great either. But let's go ahead and fit it out. See how it goes. Civilian afterburner? I mean, honestly, a civilian afterburner isn't a bad plan. Um, we might do that with a Corax. First, let's see how much damage can we get. So we're gonna we're gonna do drones. We're gonna do warriors because they're the best. Can we get some? These are one million a pop. 
probably not worth. Uh, maybe they are worth. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, let's let's put some warriors in. Okay. Uh, and then put in some drone damage amps. And some missiles. So we're doing about 80 here. And that's if we use five drones. Let's use the Republic fleet. Ninety. If we're using five. If we just go four, we're doing eighty. This gives a 10% bonus damage for every level. Whereas the Korax gets... Oh, we weren't using Kinetic. But also it only gets a 5%. The Salulu is the Tawaru. I mean, Tall Warrior is probably, like, the best option. But I don't want to train in a Tall Warrior when I just train in a Dragoon. Um, yeah, Dragoon seems a little bit better because every level of Dragoon we get 10% bonus damage. Let's look at the tower real quick. Um, it gets 5% bonus damage. Oh, it's explosive locked. Interesting. I think that is like the only explosive locked ship in the game. So this is going to be fit very similar to the Corax. Um, it does have that extra low, which is super helpful. Honestly, that's what we want. Engineering, put a power core in, put these in, 3% CPU, that's compact, that's compact, uh, we can compact one of these. And it probably, it doesn't have any drones, but, okay. So, like, that solves our fitting. Yeah, so Korax, bad. Tall War, good. Dragoon, best. Because it's getting 10% bonus per level. And can switch its damage type. Man, why does it get 10% damage bonus? That's so good.
Let's look at the other or the other destroyers. Or do we bite the bullet on the Sinesis, which is like obviously the best choice? But it is like I think it was twenty six million? No way. Dragoon's your favorite T1 Desi for the arc, but I've moved up to T3 Desis now. Yeah. This gives nothing useful. Coercer's bad. We want damage. That's most important. Comrade does tracking speed and range. It is using hybrids, which is like they already have a lot of damage, but still no damage bonus, which is bad. Uh, Algos is... Um, oh. Hey, you there. Thank you for the follow. Maybe the best. Um, oh, it doesn't have any... We would have to use hybrid turrets. I don't want to use hybrid turrets because I don't want to train or look at them. And Catalyst uses hybrids, tracking speed, fall off. Yeah, Dragoon or Algos? Let's simulate the Algos. Hey, Abby Dungeon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's going good. How are you doing? King Nacho says, I'm trying to get into faction warfare, but I don't know what side to pick and how to find a corporation. Um... Finding a corporation might... I don't know how to find a Faction Warfare Corp. Uh, but as far as choosing which Faction Warfare you want to get involved in... So first question. Do you want to you, do you want to be in an Empire Militia? So a Mar, Caldari, Mimitar, Galente. Or do you want to be a uh, Pirate? Do you want to be a Garistas Pirate or a uh, other Pirate? Angel Pirate. Uh, do note that if you are, if you join Galente Faction Warfare, then you will have a hard time accessing Kaldari areas of space, including Jita. Um, and if you are, for instance, Mimitar Faction Warfare, you'll have a hard time living or going to Amar Trade Hub. Just because you'll be a criminal and they'll try and hunt you down, the NBC, and you'll be able to be freely killed by anyone that's in the opposite militia. Things like that. Hey, you there. Thank you for the follow. Empire Faction? Yeah. So, I mean, just join whatever one you think is cool. Um, I think Galente is really cool and fun because I know some people there. Uh, but again, that means you have a hard time to access Jita, which means you definitely should have a trade alt. But if you do join Galente, they'll, they know how to do that. They'll help you set it up. Um, yeah. I don't know how to find a good faction warfare corporation. I know of Convocation of Imperians, which is Galente again. Um, yeah. I would say go to Eve Jobs Reddit. So there's a Reddit called Eve Jobs. That's where corporations recruit. Uh, that could be a definitely a good place for you to check out. Does Faction Warfare lower your standings with the faction if you leave the militia? No. Um, faction Warfare you there? will you lower your standings a little bit with the enemy. But as far as I understand, it's basically nothing unless you do Faction Warfare missions, which basically no one does. Um, so you should be good there. Thank you so much for the follows also. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so the Algos is going to be... Um, oh, it has 35 bandwidth, which means we'd be using medium drones. At least one medium drone. And then it only has 60 bandwidth. Hmm. Hmm.
Honestly, Algos does seem pretty good. And because we are eventually going to probably be getting into the Gila. What do the hybrids look like? Mm, hybrid, hybrid, hybrids. We'd probably go rails, eh? Yeah, we get tracking speed. Mm, we go blasters. I cannot tell you the difference between all of these blasters. I'm sorry. The Valkyrie really helps on Dagon. Yeah. Neutron is big damage. Modal is maybe meta 4. Okay. Yeah, normally I just go with Neutron. Because I like damage. Um, You said... Modal? We want modal? Just load antimatter. Holy smokes, that damage. Holy smokes. Oh, we are way too expensive. What is so expensive? Oh, the Republic fleets. Duh. I just made 12 of them. Uh, yeah, I'd probably use just warrior ones. Yeah, I think for for beginning stuff. I think we just use the algos. And weirdly enough, we shield fit it. Or do we do we put whole rigs? No. I think we just shield fit it. Oh, baby, that's perfect. Uh, that's MSE. You use all these acronyms. Medium Shield Extender? Yes. That's a Medium Shield Extender. Uh, we can probably make this no longer compact. Oh, just kidding. Uh, let's compare these blasters. Uh, turret tracking, rate of fire, damage modifier, optimal range. Uh, 
Um, looks like accuracy pull off is the same except for the polarized. We don't care. Turret tracking is the same except for the polarized. Uh, let's get rid of this. All right. So now damage modifier and optimal is the only thing that changes. Let's sort by price. Let's sort, sort by damage modifier. Um, modal does big damage and has the greatest optimal range. Yeah, okay. Modal is the correct choice. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, we need drones four. Why don't we just use... Yeah, if we do drones four, we can do two mediums. Uh, which is 20. And then three lights goes up to 34. Oh, wait. We do three mediums and one light. That way we only need drones four. Okay. Yeah. And that only takes two days. All right. Easy. I do want to learn drones five eventually. Let's put it maybe here. And medium drones. We're going to need to learn medium drones. Medium drones. Drone operation. All right. So let's check on market. 250,000 ISK. Easy peasy. Uh, if we show info and we go to requirements, we need to have at least drones three before we can change this. So we need to make sure that it is uh, under drones three. Oh. We also need to inject. Then we can shift click to make more levels of it. Uh, but I didn't need drones four, so we're gonna make sure what drones four gets done. Bring this up to level three, sounds about right. Um, actually, let's go ahead and bring it up to four. Mm, yeah. Uh, okay. And now, Glinty Destroyer. Oh, let's do buy and train. Check on market. Let's buy these. And inject them. Alright. Uh, and we're just going to apply some skill points here. Skill training completed. Skill training completed. Just so that we can fly it. Skill training completed. Oh, whoops. Uh, we want level one here. Skill and training completed. We can just train it naturally. Up to four. Uh, in order to use our medium drones, we do need... Actually, we can just put this up. Oh, right. We have to have drones four before we can do medium drones. Okay. That's fine. Let's do, buy, okay, we have 
We only have 30 inventory for drones, which is a little bit of a weird number. But we're going to do some warrior ones. So warriors are very good. Whenever you're using light drones, they're just good. Trust me on this one. Uh, if you don't need to do a specific damage type, warrior is the, the, the go-to. So I think we're just going to do all explosive damage and hope for the best. So drones, maybe we do a little bit of EM, which are going to be these alkalites. Let's make like three of them. Maybe four and four. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, and then we want three Valkyries. How much are Republic Fleet Valkyries? 1.5 million? Mm, too much. Oh, wait. I need three of the lights so I can have three of the mediums. Sorry, I'm watching part one. Died. We ended up changing weapons. Did we end up changing weapons? Uh, yes, Mega. So we have decided that the Algos is the correct ship for the SOE arc for what our plan is. Um, because it it gets the 10% bonus to drones per level, and we can just use these blasters to help uh, our damage without focusing too much on them. We're already skilled a little bit into blasters, so it's easy and fine. Rob Zora, 07. Welcome, welcome. Um, I am noticing our ship is pretty expensive. Can I make this a non-compact after murder? Sure can. We're going to leave this last empty slot empty because our fitting is already maxed out. Um, but let's go to our rigs, which also might cause a little problems. Uh, if we go shield rig... Let's put in a EM resistance T1 because it's cheap. So now we have a pretty balanced shield resistance profile, which is good. Uh, and then I think we're just going to put in a something to make our buffer larger, which is going to be the field extender uh, and then do we put in some more drone stuff no I think we're doing fine on that so I think we, honestly I think we just put in another extender yeah so that's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. Uh, if we hit fit ship, we'll bring up this multi-fit window. And there's these three little dots here where it says missing ships or equipment. If we go to buy all, it'll bring up the buy all menu. And here we can see what is expensive. Um, so our guns, our shield, drone damage amp a little bit. Yeah, 
This seems fine. Yeah. So before we do that, I just want to check over the fit again. Uh, we need a little bit more ammo. Instead of using this faction ammo, I guess no. We're not going to use hey, bitch, it a lot. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. Ad time. Let's look at our... We're going to compare our ammo types. Uh, oh, this all this just compares antimatter. So we're going to right-click. We're going to do this the difficult way. Right-click our ammo. So we're going to compare the different types of ammo. So for each of the Kalinari navies, there's these different uranium, tungsten, thorium, plutonium. Um... All hybrid weapons, you do kinetic and thermal damage. They just, that's all they do. Um, they do it in different ratios, uh, but you're always going to be locked to kinetic thermal damage. And hybrid weapons also use capacitor to fire. That's just a fun fact. Uh, but our range bonus is going to be relevant to the damage. So like the less range you have, the more damage you have. Any matter is the up close and personal damaging thing. Um, so let's go with this and let's also maybe get some iron just in case we need the range. Iron's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage, but it will let us shoot from 3,000 to 6,000. Uh, the, so like the question here is, is there ever going to be a situation where we can't, where we can get 3000 meters away from the target, but not 1000 meters away from the target. And I don't think that is ever going to be the case. So I'm going to just choose all antimatter. And if we do find that this is wrong, we can pick up some ammo, uh, along the, along the way. Each of these takes 80, so 80, 160, 320, uh, 400. So a full magazine is 400. Let's bring like two sets. Uh, we have all our drones. We can purchase more drones around the area if we lose too many. This looks good. Uh, let's save this fit as SOE for uh, S um, my epic arc. All right. It is expensive. It's going to take basically all of our money. If we lose this, we're in a precarious situation, but hopefully we don't lose it. What are we up to? Uh, we are doing a full new player experience walkthrough. With all the juicy details being laid out. So we bought all the stuff. Now we can fit ships. And here is our first legitimate murder machine. Oh, this looks real cool.
Oh, I need to turn these on, uh, which means we need our skills. Um, but you know what? Looking at the time. We are going to just let our skills play out. Why aren't you going? Skill levels need to be trained. It is being trained in the right order. I don't know why it's giving me that error message. Oh. Because this is already here. Um, Galante Destroyer 4 can come after these things. Okay. So it looks like in about two days or something. So that looks pretty good. We'll just train those up. Put our ammo in the thingy. And now if we go to opportunities, we can click the bloodstained stars and start a conversation. Sounds good. Please drop by so we can formalize this mission contract. So this is where she is. We right click, set destination. She's 15 jumps away. Um, yeah. Let's get to it. Drive active. Oh shoot, you know what? Uh, control space. Hit control space a bunch. Uh, because we want to set our new home station to Jita. So we're going to just immediately warp back there. Look for the G to trade hub right here. Warp drive active. Vroom, vroom, vroom. So honestly, this is actually a um, good reason. If you want to play, if you want to start as a Galente character, I think starting as a Galente character might be slightly better. Because um, you'll have a little bit more training into the hybrid turrets and the drones and be a little bit more well on your way to the, the ship. Um, what was I doing? Setting home station. Right. Go to your character sheet, go to home station, and you want to select home station. And then set home station to the current station, which is the Jita Trade Hub. Oh, and you know, while we're here, we only have 2 million is to our name, but Maybe that's enough. So we have the perception and the charisma. But the things we're training. Oh, it doesn't tell you easily, does it? 
course not. Uh, perception and willpower. Perception, willpower. Memory, perception. But let's get let's get like willpower and memory. Um, and the other one. So let's go to regional market. And they're called basic, right? Limited. They cost? Yeah, okay. Oh, the betas are the plus two, right? Yeah. So let's get a little limited memory. Uh, is this willpower? Intelligence. Neural is willpower, alright. I don't know if I can afford... So close. We need 5,000 more. Uh, let's sell our trip. We view market details. Um, so we go price. People are buying at 4.75. People are selling at 4.9. Uh, let's just, we basically have almost no value. We'll get 15,000, which is in fact just what we need. We'll sell our excess trip and get a full learning pod. A very basic learning pod. Alright. So now our clone, if our if our pod ever dies, these will go away. But our pod now has gives us plus one to all of our tributes. Again, the system's probably definitely going away soon, it seems, with the newest stuff happening. Um so yeah, we just we learn um, five percent, about five percent faster, just on all of our skills now, because we we bought those implants. So, not terrible. We are now dirt poor again. So, hopefully we don't. Hopefully we make some money. If we don't make money, that's going to be really bad. We're going to have to do something. <laughs> Probably scrounge and... Yeah, we we could make it if, it if something terrible happens. Uh, all right. And as soon as like we complete a few of these Sisters of Eve Epic Arc missions, we're going to be rolling in the dough. Oh, Project Discovery. Yeah, we could make some money doing Project Discovery. Honestly, maybe we do do that. Warp drive active. That's a great idea. Where is more info on that going any, going away? Any, um, so, like, it's, it's pretty heavily implied that the new expansion stuff is including new clones. And people are pretty much saying that, like, those new clones are going to revamp that system and they've said that they want to like change that system for a long time now and I think maybe it's finally gonna finally happen you know that will travel yes we can and because we're gonna be traveling a fair bit during the sisters of Eve epic arc it's probably a good plan Drive. Uh, we got our drones here, so let's make a combat. We're going to move these out of this group. Uh, our Valkyries are medium drones, so we're going to right-click this, move drones to combat one. Um, and then, because drones are a little bit weird, because this game's a little old and weird, uh, in order to split these up, we actually have to like let them be out in space. 
um, and then we can move them individually into the combat one because again we only want two of them to go in this combat one slot and we're actually gonna use the acolytes so let's go ahead and we're gonna just align to the gate we're gonna release our acolytes and then we're going to have them return to us and now we can put these two into combat one and now we have a drive oh wait uh, we're only going to be using four drones not five I'm so used to using five drones we're going to do this alright so we got our three mediums and our one light that'll bring us up to our 35 uh, bandwidth nice 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 Uh, all right, Project Discovery. I'm so glad you asked. What is it? So Project Discovery is a system that um, you can do things in EVE that help real-life research. Orb drive active. So this one was for, I believe, analyzing COVID? Um, yeah, basically you were looking at a bunch of samples and seeing like, like identifying what is a single thing and what is part of all of a single blob, um, to help classify and make analysis of these things easier and better. So like here, uh, running a blood sample through the flow cytometer is yielded the graph on the left. Each dot represents a cell. Cells of the same type will often group together in what we call a cluster. Your task is to identify the boundaries of such clusters. Doing so helps your fellow scientists understand how this virus impacts our immune systems. Uh, all right, sounds simple. So if we start here and then we want to fully envelop the cluster all right so we're gonna make two all right we submit it all right if you look at the chart, you'll notice a gold line and highlight. This is referred to as the gold standard. Uh, the rewards you earn for each sample are determined by how closely your gates match the standard. That said, remember that your goal is to dermocorate the boundaries of each cluster to do that, and you're more likely to produce a considered analysis. Gold for golden. And we get a score. Wonderful. All right, time to try our hand at five more. Just a hint though, there should be five polygons on this chart. Make sure to hit and submit once you finish making your gates. There's five. You what, mate? I see four. Maybe this is one. Uh, so we're gonna be like, this is one. This is one. This is one. Orb drive active. This is one. And this is one. Uh, we failed. Oh, okay. It says this was supposed to be over here, I guess. You can edit your things as you do it. Hooray! Warp drive active. Uh, this just looks like one. Up. Oh. All right. 
It's so like there is a finite amount of these, so once you like learn them, you can also know what it is, but also come on. Um there's an even better trick. Once we get to like the non trainee set. Can't have them touch. All right. Uh, it seems I got to go now. So we're going to go ahead and call it, and I will see you guys next time. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any station here, so I guess we'll go one more. But yeah, thank you so much for hanging out, and I will, uh, yeah, this will be up on YouTube eventually as episode three. And next time, we'll start the SOE Epic Arc. Hope you ha enjoyed, had a good time, and I'll see you guys next time. Let's go ahead and find someone to raid out to. Uh, let's go to Real Trouble. I haven't got to raid out to him very often. All right, here's a station. Always just you can dock up in a station Thanks when you quit. Active. It's a good good practice to always be docked up before you log off. <laughs>